Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is being called to order. Alexa, Alexa stop. Somebody is, someone is shuffling a lot of papers. You... Hmm? I, I ask the public to please put themselves on mute until the public portion of this meeting. Ms. Carter is an IT person with you. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to Public Laws 1975, Chapter 231. This agenda is complete to the extent known and was sent to the Trenton Times posted on the first floor bulletin board in the city hall, filed in the city clerk's office and posted on the city of Trenton's website. Formal action will be taken. Roll call, Ms. Carter. Unmute yourself, Ms. Carter, so you could call the roll of okay, the council. Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Present. Councilman Harrison. Present. Councilman Michelle. Present. Councilman Rodriguez. Councilman Rodriguez. Councilwoman Vaughn. Councilwoman Wilkins. Present. Council President McBride. Present. You have a quorum. I am, I am Council President. So noted, so noted that Councilman uh, Rodriguez is uh, present. Okay, thank you. Council President. Yes, um, Mr. Excuse me while we're doing the roll. Did you have something pertaining to the roll? No, I, I have something I have to say. After okay, I want so, to speak. Um, we're, we're getting the roll called. So, um, Ms. Uh, Penny, do you want um, Mr. Uh, Cruz to call the directors. Uh, that's up to you, ma'am. Um, Mr. Cruz, could you uh, call your direct the role for your directors? Uh, Madam President, uh, they they are present, um, and um, uh, Dr. Lopez will be leaving momentarily, but everyone is present. Okay, so <laughs> so don't we need to have their names as in? Uh, record it for the for the uh, minutes. Um, Madam President, if, if you wish to have that now, we can. Uh, but when you call their department, they can they can then come up and uh, uh, say who they are and what they represent. All right. Thank you. So that all Thank the you. directors are currently present. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Harrison, did you want to speak to the, before? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Council President, um, I'd like to um, well, make a motion to alter the order of business under Rule 9 of the Rule of Council to allow public comment to come before new business, in particular to invite public comment before any discussion, <laughs> vote, or decision by City Council on Resolution 22-123 on the matter of Police Director Steve Wilson. Director Wilson um, has required a, uh, required a public hearing, and for that matter, such a significance, our police director, public safety, it's crucial that our residents be given a voice and an opportunity to be heard before any decision is made. 
To hear public comment after a decision has already been made is meaningless gesture and does not give the city council the benefit of its residents' viewpoint before any vote is taken. So I put Ms. that motion um, on the floor, Council President. Ms. Ms. Penny Carter, a motion yes, has been made. A motion has been made, and it must be heard. So um, you can ask for a second. A second. Can I Okay, um, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Yes. Councilman Harrison. Yes. Councilman uh, Michelle. Yes. Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, I'm no voting on that. No vote. Uh, Councilwoman Vaughn. Councilwoman Wilkins. Yes, I believe he has. He should have the opportunity. Yes. Council President McBride. Yes. Motion was carried. Um, Councilwoman Vaughn is um, in the meeting. Here. Here. Let it be noted that she entered the meeting at 535. Um, I would just like to um, let the public know that um, we will be doing a three-minute um, public comment. So your comments cannot go over three minutes. If um, I'll, I'll make that motion, so it'll be um, so it'll be uh, added into the record. So I move to make a motion that the comments will be three minutes per uh, per person. I second, Councilwoman Wilkins. Okay, um, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Yes. Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Michaud? Yes. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn? Uh, here. No, this is for a three minute public comment. Oh, we've already oh, oh taken yes, a yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Um, we've, Councilwoman we've already taken Wilkins? A vote. Wilkins? Yes. And Council President McBride? Yes. Motion was carried. And, and so just to let the council uh, woman know she's just coming in, we took a vote to allow the public to speak at a three minute, uh, three minutes uh, uh, before we uh, go into um, our discussion. But I, I think that it, uh, that I will allow them to speak before the actual council did their discussion is prematurely, but we'll go ahead and do that. So um, with the show of hands, um, we'll, we'll call you out by the show of hands. Okay, um, I need to see some hands here for the uh, portion that wish to speak. Okay, I see hands raised, but I don't see who's raising the hand. Do you see it, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson, Vice Chair? I don't see I said just this three Joanne hands raised. Floor. Yeah, I, I see uh, Algernon Ward, Michelle uh, Reese, uh, Joanne Stewart. Uh, okay, so we'll go with we'll go with Joanne Stewart. Uh, Ms. Stewart, would you like to speak? I think you have to unmute your mic if you would like to um, be heard. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Council. Turn down another device I have on. Um, it really seems odd to me that this is even coming up. Um, Director Wilson has been a member of the police department for almost 30 years. He's been involved in the community his whole life. I've heard several council members 
most vocal um, Councilwoman Vaughn say he's not qualified to do the job, that he shouldn't be in that position. Um, when you have an officer who has served in almost every aspect of that police department, who has led task force, who's worked it hand in hand with different departments from state to federal to local levels and been successful, to say he's not qualified is ridiculous. To say that he doesn't care about the city when he came out of retirement to do this. He doesn't have to even be there, but he's there because he cares about the city. He wants something better. He wants kids to be able to play on the streets without getting shot. He wants people to be able to walk around and enjoy the city the way it was when we grew up, to be able to be on the commons and have fun. He is more than qualified to do all of this. He's been out there whenever anything has happened since he's taken this position. Anything that's happened, he's right there talking to families, trying to figure out what happened and helping to solve the issues. He's brought back programs that weren't there for kids programs that that are so needed for these kids like the explorers which helps with the kids understanding police work and the police getting to know these kids he's done so much and you guys want to take him out because what what exactly were the things that he did not do that you guys think he should have done that were done so eloquently and so well by his pre predecessors you guys act like he is supposed to have wave a magic wand and correct everything instantly. He has the best morale that I've seen of officers and those that I've spoken to love him, but yet you say he doesn't have the support of the officers that he works with. He has people who genuinely care about him and then he cares about them in that city. He wants to work with them. And uh, Councilwoman Vaughn, why is it that when he first got in the position, instead of trying to work with him, your main goal was to take him down, that you were coming for him? Why? If you care so much about the city, you would think as a council person, you would want to work with the director to try and make the city better instead of putting your efforts towards tearing him down and causing damage to the city. You act like you care so much. You really don't. And your little smirks and all the smiles and everything through the council meetings and your rudeness of interrupting everybody, it, it's disgusting. Um, I would like for the um, speakers to keep it to their comment and not attack the council because we're not here for that. Um, the next person, who's, um, could you give me a, a name if you see a show of hands? Akila um, Adubolo. All right. Akila Adubolo. Ms. Akila, could you pronounce your last name for us? Ms. That's Akilla. Algernon Ward is the next hand. She had said something about a killer, but um, if a killer okay, doesn't, okay, well, yeah, know all right, so Algernon to, Ward, that's correct. Doesn't if it if he does if she and doesn't know how to unmute herself, um, Mr. Okay. Mr. Rivera, could you tell them how to unmute themselves if they're on the phone? Mr. Algernon Ward is unmuted. Can you uh, hear us, sir? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we Thank can. You. But before Mr. Ward begins to speak, I would like for you to tell the public how to unmute themselves. If you're order. on the phone, uh, you can unmute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. You're, if you're on the phone, you can unmute yourself self by dialing star six. I would and like to make this known. I'm sorry. Vanessa Sullivan is in attendance. No, 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 uh, good evening, City Council, fellow citizens. Um, I'd just like to point out that um, the needs of our city should supersede 
any other interest that any of us might have to have. And the discussion about ricing all of the directors and firing this one and firing that one has engendered a kind of disruption that that uh, is below what the citizens of our city deserve. The canceled meetings, the uh, acrimony, it's become an obstruction to the operation of our city. The poisonous atmosphere can't continue at city council and that in city hall and the 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 back the fighting back and forth. It's not just annoying when uh, the city council can't have meetings and all of the directors are spending their time and energy uh, or fighting on useless lawsuits uh, back and forth. Uh, you're not serving the interest of the people of the city. It's a distraction, in fact, and an embarrassment if you really want to know the truth. Uh, the people of the city, I can tell you, are fed up with it. And mm -hmm. I would hope that going forward, that the city of council, uh, for God's sakes, and, and administration, put away your swords and get the people's work done, number one. And then whatever differences you have, you find a way to work them out. Because that's what you in office to do. But you seem to be obsessed with trying to take a shot at each other back and forth to the point where the operation of the city is suffering and the uncertainty and the, and the um, atmosphere of hostility has gone way beyond control. And when other uh, people in towns and states look at Trenton, they think we're a basket case. And I, you can't argue with them when you look at how the uh, government's been operating. So I implore you all, you got to take the responsibility of your office much more seriously and not personalize every issue because some of it isn't personal at all. You're there to conduct the business of the city. So I would hope that whatever steps you take, um, that you do that in the interest of the city and not your personal interest, because that should never get in front of your responsibility as an elected official. So I would hope this discussion about firing all, if you got a specific allegation and a demonstration of something that someone has did wrong, of course you have oversight powers and you exercise those. But you don't use them to gratuitously uh, slam an entire administration and think about the disruption that that would cause uh, for the people who are out here who need the services from those these, these uh, uh, departments. So I just want to implore uh, all city council members, it's time to, to take your job much more seriously uh, than you have and not allow your emotions or your political uh, uh, bent or or even or, uh, uh, your dislike for one another to interfere with the operation of the city because that's a disservice to all of us as citizens and taxpayers. So uh, I would end my remarks there and thank you for my time to speak. Next person, uh, council will move on. Do you see another, uh, another hand? Uh, yes, next one is Michelle Ress, R-U-E-S-S. -S. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <clears throat> Michelle Ress. Michelle, Michelle, do you, can you um, unmute herself. yourself? We unmute us. <clears throat> you're, un you're still on mute, Michelle. Hang on. Mm. There we go. Now? Right. Yes, you're good. Yes, okay. go, yes. Thank you, you right for ahead, putting ma public comment early in the evening so we could share our concerns with you all. I appreciate that very much. I'm just speaking out in support of Director Wilson. Um, I'm hoping that you will see all the good that he's trying to do for our community and give him a chance to continue. Um, I don't think this is the right time to make a change. Our community is very challenged right now, as you know, and things are just, I think he's just beginning to really um, hit his stride, and the police have been making some really good efforts, and the community is coming together, and we need to keep that momentum and not upset things and put things back and have to start over. So I'm hoping that you all will be able to um, support the police and support the community and allow us to, um, to heal together 
and move forward together to face our challenges. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you. Next person. Um, do you it's Joanne Stewart. Miss Joanne Stewart. I thought she had already spoke. I thought she, she spoke already. Okay. Did Sherry. Sherry Garrett. Thank you. Um, hello. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just some real quick. Uh, thank you, Council Body, Trent, City of Trenton Council Body. Uh, just a few things. Um, I, I, from what I've been following, my question, um, if I hope it's answered, is who, who do we have in line to replace Mr. Wilson if uh, he is discharged? Okay, because my concern, you know, uh, again. Um, uh, I, I don't want to keep hashing, but Sheila Cody, I don't think she should have been fired. Same sentiments in regards to that. We said that, uh, the, the, uh, the mayor couldn't work with her. So y'all terminated her. Now we're here with Steve Wilson. The administration wants to keep him, and we're talking about terminating. It's very hard to find someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, we don't have to hire a police direct, I mean, an ex police officer for that civilian director role. That's for one thing. Um, second thing is Steve Wilson got Steve Wilson has to learn his lesson here. Yeah, he's he's as you all stated or someone stated, he's been a, a police officer for thirty years. He's been on the local level and the state level. Then he should already know. Don't get into the politics. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. Well, that's what, what I'm saying in, in regards to if you're going to hire somebody who's going to deal with the political aspect, then we don't need a, a, a police officer because in that role, he just did what he was told to do. So I, I just think that Mr. Wilson got in, too involved into what was going on between the council and the mayor. And I think that's where he went wrong at, left. He needs to stay in his lane, do what he's hired to do, run that police force, and, and, and actually do what the due diligence he's supposed to do to clean it up. Um, another thing is, how will Steve Wilson address the misconduct? That's what we should be asking. Let's test him. How are you going to address the misconduct of these officers, especially with this issue with the young man being shot? What, what is he going to do? Well, how is he going to address this issue internally? How is he going to handle that internally? I haven't heard how he's going to do that. I think he needs to let us know, the public know, how. what's his plan to do with misconduct in the police department? People are not answering. Oh, and this is another thing. The, no one's answering the phone over there at the police department. No one's answering the phone. Um, I have a young lady who is complaining that her husband died two years ago. The coroner has submitted the report. The prosecutor, the prosecutor's office said they want to close the case, but they can't because the detective and the, uh, 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 the uh, criminal bureau there at the police department are not do, processing the paperwork. They're saying they're still investigating. So the, 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 the police department is not actually operating in a manner that as uh, uh, one of the other uh, uh, um, persons spoke at a level that it should be. What are you Excuse going to do? Excuse me. In thirty years. Yes. No, I'm not. Three minutes. Excuse me. It's been more no. than three minutes. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it. And um, yeah, because we're paying fifty million dollars for this police department. How is he going to deal with it? How are you going to clean it up? That's the question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Um, who's this next? Who's next? The next person is Ms. Lily. Nesavit? Yes, um, thank you, Councilwoman Vaughn. I uh, appreciate the time. I'll try not to use too much. I know there's a lot of people lined up. Uh, mm -hmm. I, th I very much concur with what uh, Mr. Ward was saying, so I won't repeat that. I just ditto everything he said. Uh, and I want to say I've lived in Trenton a long time. I spent most of my childhood here, too. And in my experience, uh, what I think is really uh, significant about Mr. Wilson, Director Wilson, is that his efforts to communicate with the public about what's going on in the city crime-wise and also prevention of crime-wise. So I really want to applaud his, his efforts. But uh, in general, also as someone who's 
who, who has uh, a lot of managerial experience myself uh, and manage many, many people at my place of work. I really am concerned. I don't, I'm not an expert in, in the, the job description of the police director or the particulars of police work. I follow it as, of course, a resident homeowner and interested, uh, interested in the future of Trenton and that and Trenton should thrive. Of course, crime and prevention of crime is extremely important in our city and to bring business and economy back so that we have resources for our people here. Um, what I am concerned and is that the message it sends that a director who hasn't uh, been on the job very long has, to my knowledge, not not uh, failed in his duties in any way would be um, dismissed after such a short term. And what looks like, and I, I'm saying I'm an outsider to what goes on in the police department, but it looks to the public like a, a political thing. How are you going to attract high quality folks to take on these highly responsible positions in the city if they're not given adequate time to, to, to make the changes and implement their initiatives. So that, that's what I would be concerned about as a manager. How are we going to attract the right quality of folks to take on these very important and critical roles if we, we treat them what I consider is unfairly and allowing them to prove their quality and to uh, to exercise their authority for the improvement of the city. If everyone's going to be on a hot seat, it's going to be impossible to get the right people. Thank you. Okay, the next person. No, Janet didn't go in. Janet didn't go in. Excuse the next us? Person Janet the next person Smart. is Janet Smart. Go right ahead, Ms. Smart. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Okay, thank yes, you. Thank can, you, Council Smart. President. Thank you. Thank you, Council President and Council Members for allowing the public to speak. Um, I also uh, 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 support um, Director Wilson as the uh, City of Trenton Police Director. I think that to fire him within seven months of the term being left council it makes you look uh some i sent this out to uh you guys yesterday it really makes us look uh like we're incompetent and, and we are strictly being political with every act that we make if director wilson is let go this will be the fourth police director within your um term that has been let go it seems as if every director regardless of their uh uh, venue is, is targeted by council and it makes it appear that this is personal rather than uh, what the um, city and the residents of the city are asking council to do. It seems as if council is taking the power away from the constituents and are misusing their power to get what they want on a personal or political level. Um, so I, I would really hope and consider, because even we, we, we came forward in support of, of um, Coley and, and, and we weren't listened to, and now we're coming forward in support of Director Wilson. So I hope that you start listening to your constituents, uh, more uh, those that are in support versus those who are not in support of. I think that Director Wilson has done uh, 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 a job that is acceptable versus what he had to go into or what he received when he got there, um, not having done this type of work before. Uh, it, it's not easy when you go into a situation and you have to answer to various individuals, the, the mayor, the city council, et cetera. So I think he's doing a fair job, and I think we should um, just wait it out for the seven months. Uh, as said, uh, he's implemented things that could not be implemented during COVID under Director Coley. So he's bringing back those services that weren't able to be provided during the COVID time. Uh, you know, he's, he's uh, looking to bring a, a PAL program back that's not only looked at uh, looking at uh, athletics, but it's also looking at other uh, activities that kids like to do these days involving uh, computer science 
uh, robotics, et cetera. So I, I think he hasn't been giving, given a, 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 a dual time to perform his duties. I know that we've gone through a hard time with the shootings and then this unfortunate shooting by the police where uh, one of our residents ha or have been paralyzed. But I don't think that we can throw that on totally on the shoulders of Director Wilson. We have to give people time to produce uh, better results for this city. And I Excuse think me. he's working towards that. And I'm sorry, Excuse is my me. time up? Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Between uh, the pastor, the mayor, uh, the, the police director, and uh, a few, uh, about eight people was there. And uh, Ms. Vaughn, I know you can tell me how many people we have in the city and why everybody wasn't invited to that meeting. But we're going to discuss that further another day. And you tell me if I'm wrong, Ms. Vaughn. But at my peace rally, a few children had a few questions, and I want to share them with you. Number one is, he said, my name is Clyde, and I live in Trenton for 15 years. He's 15 years old. And he said he never seen the police chief in his life. Yes, that's not what we're talking about? Oh, yeah, as long as you keep it to the subject. Yes, thank you. Okay, well, this is about the police chief. They, he said he never met the police chief or anyone on city council, including you. Leo is 16 years old. He goes to daylight, twilight. He said he never knew a council person, a council man. He said when he seen the mayor out there, he he didn't even know who the mayor was. Next, I have Jennifer, and Jennifer is 12, and she also said that she goes to Trenton Central High School. She don't know the police chief, that she is scared of the police. Then I have Brother Kasim, who goes to Trenton Central High School, who is 17 years old. And he said he knows not one thing about city council meeting. And myself, I want to say, we see enough police and police killing on uh, TV, black on black crime in our neighborhood, and these silent killers with this lead in our water and our pipes. And I just want to say that I, what we going to do without no police chief? What are we going to do with the um, 100 missing officers that we still missing? And y'all talking some other mess the other day, talking about putting radios in and our babies is dying. God bless you. That's all I wanted to ask. I hope I stayed on topic. Uh, Council President, the next uh, individual is a member from Trenton Voices United. Go right ahead. You have to Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have to I'm sorry. I'm... Okay, I'm Samantha Jones. Go right ahead, Ms. Jones. Good evening, Council President and entire Council. I'll keep this short. Director, excuse me, Director Wilson needs to go. There is a total lack of connectivity between the police department and the community. I think it was totally tasteless for handpicked black officers to go live in a fraudulent attempt to defund, dire defend Director Wilson. It was totally scripted and embarrassing for our city. Under Director Wilson's, under Director Wilson's officers are in, in this city are harassing black men in droves. Our city is in total anarchy. Murders, kids getting killed, drugs running rampant and racial hostility within the police department. The mayor has failed the city of Trenton with Director Wilson's appointment. I am a proud Trentonian, a black mother of three boys, but I do not want a clip of police bullets shot into. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Councilwoman Vaughn. It's uh, Mr. Darren Green. Go right ahead, Mr. Green. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Council President, to Council and to the constituents of the city, uh, Darren Freedom Green. So again, a strategic action plan that the, uh, Director Wilson is, is leading up is we're getting ready to unpack street teams. This is where individuals from the community are going to be in and about for the community, working with and within the issues and, and uh, crimes that are occurring. What isn't talked about enough on here is that we have about eight to nine subset small groups who are at war in this city. Their wars date back some 20, 25 years. That is the gunshots. That is the killings that we keep seeing occur.
that is not on the director, that's not on the mayor, that's not even on the council. That is on the collective right. body of all three bodies, which is the mayor, the council, and the people. And until we get on the same page, none of this will be resolved. But in working with the street teams, which I will certainly be a part of, Director Wilson has set up an, a, a vehicle to address the killings that keep occurring. You can't police your way out of this, but you do need the police to be a part of us returning to a safe, productive, and well-driven city. And again, when you have mechanisms being put in play that will help to deal with the issues that are here, then this can't be a political thing. This has to be a universal thing. But we see somebody leading the charge, again, to make sure we bring about resolution. I see Director Wilson doing that. He's being a piece of the puzzle that brings us all together. Do I disagree with some of the things he, he's done? Certainly. But if nobody can come on this square tonight and pinpoint anything he's mismanaged or, or did illegally, then why are we removing a director? And then I would just say to counsel, I certainly salute and thank you for listening to us tonight, but I hope you hear us. And then going into the summer months, you're transitioning and now you're going to remove another director for in less than four years. What message do you think that sends to the streets, which are already out of control, off the hook, and in turmoil? It will take all of us collectively working under the director, working under the mayor, working under this council to get our city back to being a safe and productive and viable place. And I think Director Wilson is a part of that equation. I think we need to move the politics from the game and work on what message we're sending, who we're authorizing to do it. And it'd be an amazing thing if we can get everybody on the same page, working for the same cause, for the same purpose. And I hope we can do that tonight. Don't just hear us tonight. Please listen so that we don't move the city backwards and not forward. Thank you. The, the next, next person is, is Mr. Michael Ranallo. Go right ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I do appreciate it. Um, not repeating what the previous speakers in support of Director Wilson have said. I would just like to add that he is eminently qualified to hold this position. In the months that he's been on the job, I found him to be extremely responsive and visible in the community. Um, I believe by watching him that he has Trenton's best intention in mind. The most important thing to me about your potentially removing him from this position is that you're undermining stability in the police department. That sends a message to everyone that Trenton is, is not getting its act together, if you want to look at it that way. Um, by removing him for what appears to be politically motivated reasons, you're doing harm to the police department as a whole entity. And I just feel that it would be a mistake to do that, and I would like to voice my extreme support for keeping Director Wilson on the job. So thank you very much for your time, and uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to comment. The next person is Chino, C-H-E-E-N-O. Chino? Go right ahead. Could we move to the next person? Is there a... a is there another hand up? Chino was not responding. I don't think there's anybody else. Council President. Yes. Is this Chino? No, this is Paul Harris. We do have speakers here in the, the conference room when you're ready. Hmm? Oh. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Vaughn, do you see any other hands? Yes. Uh, yes, I see uh, Debbie Parks and Mary Horn. Debbie Parks first. Go ahead, Ms. Parks. Good evening, City Council. And as other speakers have said, thank you for presenting this forum so that the citizens can uh, weigh in. I have lived in Trenton, North Trenton, all my life. Um, I have to say, I believe that um, Wilson needs more time. I don't see where he's done anything negative or anything wrong here. What's happening in Trenton, who, we've all been here, 
This has been happening off and on in Trenton for decades. The issue is not political, and I agree with Brother Green. This is not the council's fault. It's certainly not the mayor's fault, and it's not Director Wilson's fault. The bigger issue that we need to come together to fight is why do we have these guns on our streets? We all know they're coming from Virginia. Why hasn't that stopped? That's nothing one person can do. What I would love to see is for Trenton as a whole to get behind this director. The summer is coming, and if if he is removed, it will send a message to, I forget, somebody mentioned there eight factions out there. If we remove the police director, we are opening the door for possibly the worst summer in history because what the message is is that we are in discourse and they're going to get away with what they've been doing. That is the message, whether it's intentional or not, that is the message that's being sent. We need to give Wilson enough time to show his worth. He's put forth initiatives that were not here before. So the way I see it, there are more positives on his side and I'm not hearing specific negatives. So with that being said, I think we need to get behind the police director and support him, support us, support this community through this summer, which could be hell for all of us. So I just encourage you guys to do the right thing and let's work together to make Trenton the town that it could be. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Horn. Yes, good evening, Council. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Just like you say, uh, briefly, is that we in the city, we all want things to work out or people to work together and to get things right. But there's also accountability for all the directors. Certainly, council's doing their job, their due diligence, which is to write legislature. So I don't know when it comes in to point the fingers at council all the time. You know, I don't think that's fair. But, you know, people have a voice and they have a right to speak it. But I'm going to re uh, uh, quote uh, Johnny Cochran's words. We've taken time from our grandparents. We've taken time from our uh, parents, taken time from our children. It's time to do something. Okay? We move swiftly to move, we move one director swiftly. And now we have another that uh, there has been crime that has been over and over and, and has reached its maximum and overrolled on its maximum. Nobody's saying that somebody's responsible or uh, uh, for somebody who goes out and shoots someone, but there is accountability. If you oversee a department, then you have to ensure that that department, department has a plan to keep people safe and to do their job. And the bottom line is this. We can point the finger at council all every time, but we don't want it to uh, give the responsibility to the directors to do their job. And if that job is not being adhered to, we can put them in a safety net all we want. But it's not helping the community. And as far as I can't wave a wand and, and see the future, I don't know what's coming. But I do know what's not happening right now, and that has to change. And we all should take that in mind. We all want what we want when we want it, but it's not happening right now. And we have to find another way. So if the responsibility haven't been adhered to and there's not a plan in, in, in effect, then I don't support Director Wilson. It's time to change. And rather someone likes it, don't like it, and this is not personal, I'm looking at all aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And that's something we should think about, all of us. So if it's not working, then it's time for a change. 
If next time it doesn't work, then it's time for a change until we get this right. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Who's President, there? the next one is Chad Jay. Go right ahead. Sir, go right Thompson? ahead. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. My name is Chad Johnson. Um, <clears throat> I believe Steve Wilson is doing a good job uh, being a police director. Um, I've seen him out in the community on a lot of different events. I have emailed him on something, and he, has, he, he did get back to me with the email and had an officer reach out to me and call me about the situation, and it was solved. Um, you know, you cannot build a ship overnight. You know, things take time, and you just can't say you're going to get rid of them, and it's only been seven months. You know, things take time, and let's see what happens. Um, I believe he's going to be a great police director for the city of Trenton, and he has my support. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anybody else, Council President. Yellow yeah, poll. There's, oh, there's a towel. Uh, I see, Council President. Uh, we have Tanya Watkins. I hear. I just heard someone. Tanya Watkins. Jacqueline Vereen. No, no, Jacqueline Vereen. No, 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 you're not. You, I well, see. Let, let, next in line is Tanya Watkins. The next guest is Caroline. Uh, okay, so listen. Um, Hold on, Ms. Vereen. I heard Mr. Bethea. Hold on. Um, just um, be silent while the others speak, and we'll get to you. Um, go right ahead. Um, there was a Caroline. Hello? Tanya, Tanya, Hello. first Tanya Watkins, and then Caroline. Okay, then uh, Mr. Bethea, then Ms. Vereen. Go right ahead. <coughs> this is Caroline. The DJ? Here, yeah, you want me to, uh, there's chicken. No, Miss Miss Horn, you need to mute yourself. <laughs> Tanya Watkins. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, or unmute, here you go. How you guys doing? Thank you for inviting the people. Um, all I want to say is, I don't know Mr. Wilson, but I am a Trenton resident, and I have been for the last 38 years. And um, I'm also a mother of a black son. And do I feel safe with my son in the city? No, I don't. And I know I hear people saying that, you know, give people time or whatever. But how much time is it going to take until something happens to certain people's kids? Then are people going to really care? Like when when I was in high school, we had a lot of different programs, a lot of different trades, things for these kids to do. So I, I do agree with Darren also with getting getting out to the city and being able to, to do different things. But I think we need to start with going to the people and asking them what they feel like can help the city, not people that don't really live here, that just work here. That's all I have to say. Thank you. So the next person, Councilwoman Vaughn, was who? Uh, Caroline. Good uh, evening, Council. Caroline. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, good evening, Council. Good evening to the city of Trenton. Um, I heard a couple of um, residents say that they cannot point to anything specific that was wrong, why we should not keep um, Director Wilson. I am not pointing any fingers at Director Wilson, but I do have a question, first a comment and then a question. The comment is, the measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Director Wilson, where were you when Mr. Henderson was shot on February the 12th? Why was there no public statement around that issue when clearly it involved police, alleged police misconduct? I understand that there needed to have been an investigation, but I also believe that there should have been a 
public disclosure that indeed an investigation was going to be undertaken. The right time to do the right thing is right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bethea? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, Paul Bethea. Listen, how I feel about it, and everybody in Trenton, uh, about the police director. So number one, who we, who we gonna be placing with? And just like the young lady said, that uh, he should have gave, uh, let the public know what was going on. Now, did he go out and shoot them guys? No, he didn't go out and shoot them, but he runs the department and he should have let the public know what was going on. And if it was any of our children that got shot in the car when I seen that video, it was a shame because the cops that done it should be held accountable for it, for that. And the police director should have made him deal with that. And he should have notified the public on that incident. So council, the best thing I can say about that whole incident that we cannot have a police commissioner that don't address the public when something serious like that happens. And I got a whiff of it, what, three weeks later when people was talking about it? Crime in Trenton is running crazy. I'm not blaming council. It's the police commissioner that needs to answer. He needs to come to the public. Like, we was, it was a meeting at Galilee yesterday. It supposed to be yesterday, but then they said he had it the day before. And we was going to go there. But then they said they, uh, it was the day before, and they mixed it all up. Now, there's a lot of people that should be held accountable for it. You know what I mean? The mayor should be held accountable for it. You know what I mean? And, and, and various other people should be accountable. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. And everybody, if it was their child, their niece, or anything, they would been say he got to go. He needs to address the public like a police commissioner is supposed to do because we paying him. And council should do the right thing and, 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 and remove him and find somebody else that can do the job because he did not address the public when it happened. And if you send a message to him, and the rest of them will stop these police. Because if you think it's going to stop from that, it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going on. And it's going to keep going on. And it's going to keep going. How many brothers got to lose their lives? How many brothers in the city of Trenton? Drugs is running crazy in Trenton. Come on. And these people that talking, I don't think they live in Vietnam. I live right in Vietnam. I live in Kuwait. Kathy live in Kuwait. We see this stuff. Robin live in Kuwait. In data, we don't live in Princeton. We live right here. Excuse so the me. The police commissioner should have came me. out. And he, I heard you. And I'm, I'm in this, like you said, he should have came out and addressed the Excuse public me. the moment it happened. Time is up. Thank you. We're moving him. Okay. The, the next, Mr. the next Mr. one Reed. is Mr. Ricks. It's, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Mr. Green, no. you're Mr. right. Mr. Green, Mr. Green. Go right ahead, Mr. Green. Or Mrs. <coughs> Mr. Green. Mrs. Green. We can't hear you. Go ahead to the next, the next person. Uh, Mr. W. Ricks. Mr. Ricks? Or W. Yes. Ricks? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Hi, yes, Ms. Ricks. Good, af uh, good afternoon. Good mm -hmm. afternoon. Hope all is doing well. Okay. I know I didn't jump on here approximately when the meeting uh, first commenced, but if from what I'm hearing is actually true that we want to remove the police commissioner because we find him at fault of one thing which or additional things but priority from what i'm hearing 
is because he failed to address the community, the residents of the city of Trenton in regards to the uh, use of, in regards to the use of force with a firearm. If that's the only thing you find at fault, I disagree with that. And please note that I was born and raised in the city of Trenton and I still reside in the city of Trenton. The police commissioner solely cannot control the use of firearms illegally transported across state lines. We need to identify the problem. The problem is not the police commissioner or the officers or the citizens that or the um the legally abiding citizens. We need to first look at the threat. A threat by definition, danger of immediate harm. Who's the threat? Or is it those teenagers, these young adults that are controlling and holding firearms that's the threat then we need to rectify that we also need to recognize who's at risk is it the young the young children the members of the community yes until we identify the threat we cannot point the finger at someone that is qualified to control that job we need to stop doing that once you identify the problem you collect your information at that point we can move forward we need to know the police powers, they do their job, just like we do our job in our, in, our, in, our, in our business. But until we identify the threat and know our risk, we can move forward and execute properly. You need to know our options. Once we identify our options, then we can respectfully move forward. But again, people, resident city of Trenton, we cannot disqualify from what I'm hearing, the commissioner, based off the sole fact that he did not initially notify the city of Trenton for the use of use of force, which involved a firearms, we have to recognize these people. I, I'm sorry, but I disagree. I, I totally, I disagree with that. It's improper to uh to to disregard his qualifications when he's trying. It takes a team. You need a team to properly respond. And that team is not only just the commissioner and his officers, it starts with us. Who the threat is. I don't know why I can't get on this phone. Hello? Okay. Vereen on? Hello? Is Ms. Is, yes, is Miss Vereen on? Yeah, Miss, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, my name is Jacqueline Vereen. And um, my, well, good evening, Council. My name is Jacqueline Vereen, and I have a mother, Helen Holloway, who stays on Martin Luther King Boulevard, North Trenton, practically all her life. Far as Mr. Wilson goes, I haven't seen him in the community, nor I know anything about, about what's going on with him, about what I heard. Here's the thing. I see police ride up and down harass our black men. I see brutality. I'm sitting there right on the porch with my mother who sits there each and every day. I'm also calling out March Caldwell to do a little bit more for North Trenton. And also I'm saying that we need to change the police station. And I feel that the, the rookies, they need a little bit more training. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Council. Who's next? Seeing no hands, um, Mr. No, there's more the hands. Next one, uh, Council President, oh, okay. the next okay, one. Okay, well, is, I can't see the hands. That's why I'm okay, asking. I'm you sorry. Guys to I'm help sorry. Me out the here. next one is Mr. Rich, R I C H. Uh, yes, how you doing, Council? My name is Rich Perilli, and uh, I'd like to. Uh, Say hello to the council people and also the taxpayers here at Trenton. Uh, there's not much I can say that hasn't been said on behalf of Director Wilson, uh, especially the um, recorded testimony from the black officers uh, group that was, I believe, a few days ago. Now, a vote against Director Wilson is a vote against enforcing the law. It's a, it's, a, it's a vote for crime to, uh, to 
get someone else. I, 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 uh, I, I heard a woman uh, say that we should get someone else. And that's, okay, okay, let's get someone else, all right? Now, that leads me to a question I would like to ask um, Director Wilson, if possible. Um, if not, the question uh, stands openly. Uh, the question, uh, Director Wilson, is will he allow, or will you, will you, Director Wilson, will you allow 60 thriving businesses to be destroyed and about three, four, whatever it was, um, officers, vehicles, and a riot where nationwide people have have died. Now, a vote. All right, it, it's a, it's a rhetorical question, but the but the someone else that someone mentioned has willfully promoted that. There was an order to stand down. Okay, let's let let's let, let it roll. Let 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 everything fall where it may. And it's crime crime in general. You cannot surgically remove crime from general crime from murders. You know, I'm think I'm thinking of this little girl that got killed. And you can't, the more crime you have, the more murders you're going to have. You can't separate the two. It, it just can't happen. It's not like water and oil. It, it's, it's just, and I, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what the motives are. Actually, I kind of do know what the motives are. I mean, it's not, it's not like we're illegally appointing a council member here. We're, ta we're trying to take out law enforcement. That's what we're trying to. Uh, that's what this this uh, circus is about, and that's all. The next hand. Could you tell me who the next hand is, please? Uh, city council. <clears throat> yes, the city council. I don't know who that is. It, I guess it's some room. Somebody has their hand up, and the next I'm one. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Yes, my apologies. I'm gonna put my name in wrong. My name is Leticia Fenderson Singh, and I'm contacting. Um, I'm glad that you had this discussion because I did meet with um, Mr. Wilson approximately the beginning of the year, and I had a few questions with him regarding the city of Trenton as far as the crime rate, rate what he has going on for the children, and things like that. And upon um, my observation of Mr. Wilson is that he do have a, a history with the city of Trenton as he served with the Trenton Police Department. He's all, he also knows the street inside out where he can detect any issue that happens with crime, so he knows the city. It, it, it appears to me, in my opinion, that it's difficult for him because, you know, he, he's getting blamed for everything that happens. If it's a domestic issue inside someone's home, someone is blaming Mr. Wilson for that happening. I also had a discussion with Mr. Wilson regarding programs that that um, that should be utilized in the city of Trenton for our youth, and he also made me aware of a program that's supposed to be going on at South Clinton Avenue. I asked him about things that's going on for um, fellas that's hanging out on the streets that really want jobs but don't want to work at McDonald's. He made me aware of a, um, a program that's going on with City Hall with fellas that's coming, you know, out of jail and things like that. And in my opinion, I think that it wouldn't be, we should give him a chance and we should also try our best to support him instead of looking for the flaws in what he's doing because this era that he is working under is terrible. This is a bad era. I don't see Mr. 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 Wilson breaking the laws or doing anything that will cost the community or the department. However, if he had the support of the community and of the council members and everyone worked together, I think that this could be, Trenton would get better. However, some things go good, some things go bad, but in the same token, removing him wouldn't be a good idea because he do have that history with Trenton, and his responses to a lot of these crimes that's going on is really... It's, it's good and manipulant. 
So, you know, um, thank you for hearing me out. And also, I would like the opportunity to speak with Mr. Mc, Mrs. McBride um, on the side. Uh, I did leave her counsel, uh, uh, the clerk, when I was at the New Jersey League of Municipalities, a letter to give to her regarding the, um, the ATVs in Trenton. So thank you for hearing me out, and hopefully we can let Steve stick around for a little while and give him a chance, and we all work together. Uh, Council next. President, the next one is the office of the mayor. Okay, go right ahead. My Good evening to everyone. Uh, to the council, uh, my name is Hazel Story. Dear City Council, please we please do not terminate our police director Wilson. Until this point, he is a good doing a good job as they address the issues of Trenton. The issues of Trenton of the shooting needs resolution that we have get guns off out of the hands of young people who are using them to kill. This is not just a Trenton problem. It is happening across the nation. Until now, Director, Director Wilson has taken initiative. He has personally reached out to the community. He has set up training. He has begun youth programs collaborating across the city to address this huge problem. The determination of the director of the police department is not wise or answer to the problem. I respectfully request that council consider this direction. Enough has been taken apart. Let's find a way to build our city. Sincerely yours, Hazel L. Stewart. Kevin Amanda, I'm Reverend Harris, pastor of the Galilee Baptist Church. For the city council, to Director Wilson, Mayor Reed, and to all who are listening, my heart is heavy laden here tonight. I've heard a lot of foolishness. There have been killings and shootings since the 1959, when I was just a little boy. Gangs were killing. Wilson wasn't even around. We want to blame him for everything. But the truth is, we, the city, need to come together as the people. Someone's speaking. This is Pastor Harris. And I want you to know that you can always point the finger at somebody else who's wrong. But all of us got our point of view. Someday, all of us are going to have to give an account. My own son was killed in this city while I was in revival in St. Louis, Missouri. Chief Williams waited until I flew back before they would move the body. I didn't blame Chief Williams, and I'd be real foolish to blame Chief Wilson because he wasn't even around. Y'all want this city to be better than the pastors, the city council, and the mayor, and all of the other people of the city we must stop this now and stop pointing the finger at somebody else. You got a good man. Let's don't destroy him too. Yes. Because of political agendas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any more hands? Councilwoman Vaughn, you have to help me out because I cannot see any hands. Good afternoon, Council President. Detective Bernstein. Well, we still have one more. Multiple more. Someone needs to mute themselves. Council President, there are still people willing to speak here in the conference room. How many people okay. in the conference room? Can you give us the yeah. names? There Dr. Going to speak. Shirley Gaines, Trenton Police Chaplain. Just going to speak. Okay, go right ahead, Ms. Gaines. Good afternoon, Council President, and everyone on the Council Board, and everyone that's here. I'm Dr. Shirley Gaines, and I am a Trenton Police Chaplain. I'm here representing all the chaplains that are here 
at the City Hall this afternoon. And one thing that we want to say concerning the police director, we think he's doing an excellent job. When we get calls two, three, four o'clock in the morning when everybody's sleeping and, re and resting, we can depend on the director to be there. This director has been one of the directors. He's approachable. We can call him. We can talk to him about stuff. We can share ideas with him. We can call and set up meetings with him. We think he's doing an excellent job. Shootings, anything going on in the city, the police chaplains are there. Not only are we there, our director is there. I don't know what the concerns are concerning the director with our council and whom I have a great deal of respect for, but I would hope that council would consider that we do have a good director and I would hope that you give him an opportunity like everyone gets an opportunity. So council, I'm asking you to please consider uh, the decision that you're going to make against the director and bring it back to a positive because he is doing it. And not only myself, all the chapter, chaplains that are here, we can vouch for the work that he is doing in our communities. And I'm not going to say what everybody said already. Dan Green made it clear and good and a few others. So I'm asking you to please consider, because he is doing a great work. He's bringing programs back that we hadn't had in years. He's bringing, he, he, him and the mayor are bringing back mental counselors that's going to be on the streets, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, late at night, 24 hours to get out and talk with the community. So please look at what he is doing versus whatever else that you think that he's not doing. Thank you for this opportunity, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. Mark Bridge, pastor of Trent Deliverance Center Church. Um, I am staying to be late for my 7 o'clock meeting because of this man here. Um, let me just begin by saying, if we were to switch out a parent every three months, what would happen with that child? What kind of child would that be? If you did it every seven months, what kind of child would you have? Let me share this with you. This man here, I've known for the better part of 30 plus years. And I will say this with great confidence. He is more honest than most that are in this room here and in the room that you're sitting in. Let's talk Amen. about it. Amen. Amen. You talk about experience. Experience is one thing, and we need it. But we need some honesty also. I just want to say, I've never seen the director out there on the street as much as Steve. That's right. Um, I have never been so willing to give of my all because of him. And if we had more like him, perhaps sitting on city council. <laughs> Amen. And I love city council. Most of you I know personally. But this man here does not deserve any form of attack. Right. Let him serve his time. God bless you. Is there any more? Sh is there any show of hands in the public? If there's no more show of hands, yeah, there is. No, there are. Tracy Sipex. Go right ahead. Thank you, Council President, and good evening. Good evening, City Council. Um, just want to say in support of Steve, um, a lot has already been said tonight. Um, more positive than negative for sure. Um, I was one of the ones that was just in City Hall and supported Steve a few minutes ago. I had to get out because I have a class at 7 o'clock. But I just want to say, you know, Steve has been that director. When there are shootings in the city, Steve is at these shootings. He is out in the streets. He is out in the community. And he's only been on the job seven months. And we're already talking about replacing him. I can't believe we're here tonight playing political football, playing political football with not only this man's career, but the fact that a young lady was killed here in the city. We haven't even buried her. Her funeral is this Saturday. And we're here on this call, and I'm looking at council members. I see smirks on faces and laughs. I mean, this is not a laughing matter. People lies are a state. I am looking forward. I am looking forward 
working with this director in the very, very near future on reducing violent crime and reducing folks who are repeatedly going back to prison and coming home to commit crimes. We're looking to work with this director to do that, not to look to work with somebody else. Steve has came up through the ranks. He has been a trip police over all his life. I mean, come on, how, 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 much home, how much local do you want to get? We cannot continue to fire directors and think people are going to take this city serious. We got six more months, seven more months, and this is going to be over with. I ask this as council to continue to let's move forward. Let's move the city forward. Let's work together, together, because I believe some of the citizens stood up and stood up and made phone calls. So let's work together and bringing the police and the community together and really, really try to help our kids and solve crime here in the city. We have an opportunity to do that together. Those folks that I've seen in that room, Steve has a lot of support, a whole lot of support, a whole lot of support. And this city council needs to recognize that. Thank you. Councilwoman Vaughn, do you see anyone else? Nope. Unless there's somebody else in the mayor's office. My name is Ethel Jones Robin, as you know it. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I feel very good about coming to this meeting tonight to see what you are doing. And that's nothing. All right. Don't get rid of somebody because you don't like them. You know, the fault lies with the parents. The parents are not raising their kids. All right? Until we start doing our part, you won't have to have these kind of meetings. That's right. All right? We are failing somewhere. Yes, right. Raising our kids. Somebody raised you. Okay. All right. We need to start paying more attention to what's happening in the schools. Yes. What's happening in this community. I was I've been living here, I want to tell you, hold on. <laughs> but I was born and raised here. Yes. Okay, I had four children that I raised here and attended the schools here. Yes. I attended the schools here. Yes, our teachers loved us and cared about us and told us when we were wrong. All right, well, you just need to tell your uh, your children and the children that are coming after you. You know, you you're the prime example of the the uh, Justice Department that they don't want to, the black woman that they don't want to put in, has all the qualifications. Now this young man raised here, came up through the ranks, and he, you're trying to put him out. <laughs> don't do that. Because like my mother and my grandmother used to tell me, you be careful who you put out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who's next? Who's next? Okay, I guess anybody else in the mayor's office before I go back to the queue? Anybody else? Okay, the queue. We're back to the queue. Um, is Jenna Gettenberg? Yes. Ooh. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, City Council. Um, just wanted to say a few words. Um, I think it's interesting that we forget the history of our city in terms of gun violence, drugs, gang-related violence. You know, if you've lived here your entire life, you know it's been here. Director Wilson did not create it, nor can he fix it alone or overnight. We need to stop pointing fingers, and we need to forge relationships with the community, our officers, our kids, and encourage education, uh, manners, and respect for life. We don't need to just keep talking about it. We need to actually do it. Um, our city deserves a fair shot at reform, and that does not come with the Trump mentality of you're fired. Our kids, our adults, they're dying. 
you know, people make mistakes, but let Director Wilson lead and remedy those issues. Give him the time to do that before ultimately judging him and saying no more. And especially when we don't have any plan in place to put somebody else in that position. Thank you. That's it, Council President. No more hands. All right, I see a 831 eight, number. I don't see that, okay. My hand is raised, can you all hear me? We can't hear you. At eight three one three five seven five. This is Terry Wilson, Mike. Go right ahead, Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson. A lot of people are texting me saying they're being kicked out of the calls. Mm -hmm. Hi, good evening, Council. This is Ty Terry Wilson. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm calling this evening to advise the council to please reconsider the decision that you want to make to get rid of the police director. In the city of Trenton, we have a lot of issues, and these issues precede our current director. I believe that we need to make sure we understand that crime is committed by people who want to have an opportunity to um, do whatever it is feel, feel they need to do to settle the score. I believe that we need to get to the root of the issues, and I believe that we need to work closely with our police director to find out what is happening inside the city of Trenton. And the way we do that is we have to listen to what the residents are saying. We cannot just keep getting rid of directors. I believe that there is a problem within our police department, but I don't see any director that we have gotten rid of on the street committing the crimes that we have. So we're not differing when we say that there is an issue. We do differ with the resolution. So I strongly encourage you all to reconsider the decision to get rid of the director and work closely with the residents, the community, and the police department to figure out how we can get a resolution to end this crime. Thank you for taking my, my comment. Alrighty, so I'm going to make a motion to close public comment um, because we still have the rice notice in front of us and we still have a docket in front of us and Miss Penny Carter um, the, that is hosting this meeting, um, I don't want her to leave before the meeting is completed. So I'm making a motion to close pu public comment. So move. Miss Penny Carter. I'm sorry, I had to step out for a minute. Where are we? I made the motion to close public comment. I had a second. I don't know who seconded. They have to identify. Second. second. It was Councilwoman Robin Vaughn. Seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Yes. Sir. But the residents uh, do not agree with this. I move to table it indefinitely or forever, whatever it is. Thank you. Is, is, there, a a, is there a second to that motion to table the second? Second. 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 Okay. Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson? Yes. Councilman Harrison? Harrison? Councilman Nichelle? Yes. yes. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn? No. Councilwoman Wilkins? No. And Council President McBride? No. Mm -hmm. um, Councilman Harrison? Yes. How did you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Ms. Carter, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So it was a four to three vote in to table in favor of tabling it. So we would um we would like to move on to the um to the uh next resolution and that resolution is um 22-121 excuse me for just a minute are we going to go into executive session to talk about the um, are you moving that to another set no, no um i needed to ask mr bridges if if, if there were attorneys on for this particular uh, yes, Council President, there are um, there are assistant city attorneys on the call. We don't have any outside council, but there are assistant city attorneys on the call for presentations of um, attorney-client privilege so, matters. So, since they're on, um, since they're the city attorneys, uh, we can just go ahead through the docket and do the executive session at the end of the docket. Okay. You have resolution twenty-two dash one twenty-two. A resolution urging Congress to review and revise all laws relating to the regulation of social media. Well, I have to say something about this one. Uh, I, I'm the proponent of that resolution. The reason I came uh, came to uh, do that was because uh, yeah. my Facebook and you know, all my social yeah, media means the ones that I use. Or, no, uh, you, what happened is he's, he's been asked. Uh, you need to mute yourself, Mr. Powers. Can I speak, please? Yeah, you can speak. Yeah, you speak. Yeah, you speak. I can't hear who's talking. Okay. Councilman Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Okay. Yes, the reason I brought up this resolution is because uh, a, week, a, a little bit over a week ago, Mr. Bill Kearney, from the Trenton Orbit, block my Facebook, hack my accounts. Uh, I'm a duly elected uh, councilman in Trenton, and I use my uh, my Facebook to communicate with my constituents all the time, all the time. And uh, that's how I communicate everything that that could help uh, the city. Uh, but Mr. Bill Kearney, he blocked it. I have the I had the proof. I had the proof. I have the message that he sent me back stating I I unblocked you. So that means that he blocked me. And I contacted the prosecutor, I contacted everyone. They said you have to deal with that with Facebook because there, there are no regulations, no laws uh, that control that. So that's the reason I am uh, pushing for this. Hopefully it should pass unanimously. Because this is this is going to go to Washington. This stuff, this the social media stuff, has to be regulated, like today. Okay, thank you. Council you President. Oh, they don't. Council President. Are you going to recognize me? Is that, is that George? Yes, yes. Go right ahead. It's the um, mute and unmute. I always mute myself when you guys are speaking. Go right ahead, Mr. Harrison. It was Mr. Michelle. Oh, okay. oh I apologize. Councilman Michelle. I'd like to roll call that one. We just got off. Uh, Put that in for a roll call. Yes, uh, Miss Miss Carter, that's a roll call. Twenty-two one, twenty-two. We're roll roll calling for. Oh, for Thursday. Then. Okay, we can move into the Department of Administration, twenty-two dash ninety-eight. So. Far. It's a resolution to approve the present the introduction. Oh, that's going to be on Thursday. I guess the presentation is this evening. Yes. Council President, presentation I, of the budget. Yes. I have, I have, who's it? 
from what I'm, well, this is Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Okay. The, the, the resolution says, uh, from what I have, to, to approve the introduced budget. Now, this resolution should be to introduce the budget, not to approve it. <coughs> Ms. That's Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Cruz. Hi, uh, Madam President. If the will of the council is for us to just scratch off that one word, uh, we can make the uh, the change uh, tomorrow morning and send you the uh, the resolution that will have the word approved stricken from this resolution, and then just say resolution to introduce the budget uh, for the calendar year 2022. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Thank you. Presentation is. <clears throat> Are we going to see a presentation, Mr. Cruz? Uh, Madam President, yes, my apologies. Um, uh, I, if uh, IT can put up the, um, the presentation. And uh, Colin. Good evening, Madam President, if I may. Madam President, if I may. Go right ahead. Um, this is our presentation. Um, I'm going to keep it brief, I know, in the interest of time. Um, good evening, members of council. Good evening, members of the public. This presentation will be available in its entirety online um, after tonight. So anyone who wants uh, to look through the details and the numbers in it can do so at their leisure. Uh, next slide, please. This is just a brief summary. We're attempting to introduce the budget this week. Um, prior to June, uh, we will have to receive DCA approval to adopt the budget once we've gone through our budget uh, deliberation process and any departmental hearings that council wishes to hold. And then uh, by the end of June, uh, we will need to take a vote to adopt the budget. Uh, Next slide, please. This is just a brief overview of the budget. The budget total this year is $226.7 million, including grants, which is actually a decrease of about $800,000 compared to FY 2021. And the reason we're using FY 2021 for our comparisons is that that is the last year that we had a, a full 12-month budget. Uh, the municipal tax rate for CY 2022 is identical to the municipal tax rate from the previous year. That means that the municipal tax rate will continue our promised 30-month uh, streak with no increase. And this budget uh, seeks to maintain existing levels of expenditures. As a result, we're, we've taken steps to greatly restrict any new hires, um, and we're attempting to maintain the same levels of service that we're providing now. Uh, next slide, please. This is just the numbers. Um, and again, this will be available online, so don't feel as though you have to uh, take all this down right now. But the key points that I would like to point out, I did mention that we are um, about $800,000 lower this year than last year, which you can see in the bottom right uh, cell. But that's somewhat misleading. Um, there are two fields that are a little bit confusing that I want to talk about. In 2021, we had a nearly $14 million cash deficit because we weren't able to get our um, tax bills out by the end of the fiscal year. And therefore, uh, DCA required us to take that as a deficit and then move it into, um, you know, move it into FY 2021 as a deficit. Um, 
In addition, sort of counteracting that deficit, you'll see in the revenue side, um, under delinquent taxes, uh, if you could go back a slide, please. Um, if, on the revenue side, there in the delinquent taxes, this year we're collecting $2 million in delinquent taxes. Last year we collected $28.3 million. The reason for that is that that 28.3 actually represents us getting a full quarter tax payment in FY 2021 that was delayed from FY 2020. So those two numbers are, are a little bit misleading. Most of the actual appropriations, as is expected, have gone up slightly from last year. Um, but uh, the overall budget is down 800000 and I just wanted to talk about briefly why that was. Uh, next slide, please. This is our usual pie chart, just of our revenue. Um, and you can see it's it's fairly typical um, from where it usually is. Um, about 36% from taxes, about the same from state aid, and then some additional uh, sources of revenue. Next slide, please. Our brief summary of revenue, we have 290 $18.1 million, excluding the grants. The grants this year are about $7.6 million. Other state aid, um, including Comptra and energy receipt tax, $22.5 million and $36.3 million, respectively. And then, of course, we've included our capital city aid uh, at $10 million. Uh, next slide, please. This is our appropriations outlook. While the numbers have grown a little bit, um, just in case anyone is curious, the percentages are about the same as most years, with the, lar the plurality of expenses being salary and wage, um, and then um, the others, uh, as noted there. Um, next slide, please. Our department budgets, meaning Everything assigned to an individual department, be it staff or other expenses, uh, represents almost half, 49% of the appropriations budget. Fringe, fringe benefits are a quarter of the budget. Debt service is about 12%. Um, general liability is almost 1%. And then 13.1% just represents all of the additional things like the reserve for uncollected taxes, uh, the money we provide to the library, our salary adjustment program, buyouts, etc. Uh, next slide, please. And this is our last slide. We just wanted to briefly talk about the tax impact. We're, as we understand it, you know, the the county will send this out officially, but the total tax levy, uh, including Type One school and minimum library tax, is going up um, from eighty one point nine million or excuse me, to 81.9 million from 81.7. That is, um, you know, about two-tenths of a percent. Um, but uh, the important part to note about that is the Type 1 school tax and the minimum library tax combine with the municipal tax to make the total tax levy. Those first two, the school tax and the minimum library tax, are set by the county. They are not set by our budget. We don't have anything to do with that. Our tax rate is um, is identical to what it was last year, um, both in FY 2021 and the transition year. So just reiterating what I said briefly earlier, um, this represents, assuming um, we move forward with the budget as presented, it will represent 30 consecutive months without any municipal tax increase. And I, I personally want to thank um, City Council for partnering with us to make this happen um, as long as we have. I think that, that council members also deserve uh, credit for being able to do that in the face of COVID, uh, as well as our rate increases for our employees that we were able to um, passed last year. I think that this is something that 
that um, the governing body deserves a, uh, a pat on the back for. This is a it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big victory, I, I think. Uh, and that's it for the presentation. As I said, this will be posted online. We will also post, of course, the introduced budget online. Um, and I'm, Madam President, prepared to take any questions that council might have. Okay, what's um, If there are no questions right now, we will work with council to schedule our department hearings. And of course, council members are more than welcome to ask questions of the individual departments at that time. And we're excited to, to uh, move this process forward. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Penny Carter, you may continue. Okay. Um, select like that. Um, resolution 22-100, a resolution exercising the option to extend the contract for an additional one year awarded to. Well, well let us let us first um, recognize that the um, that the um, that the budget resolution still have to be voted on. So that is a roll call. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just said. The um, the resolution 22-98 uh, is still a roll call. It's right. Part of the consent agenda. We have we have two resolutions dealing with the budget on this um, agenda docket, 22-98 and 22-99. Um, I'm assuming that both of these are, deal with the introduction of the budget. Right. And so, that would so, be on 30. So 22-98 is the one that we were um, discussing. And so um, it needs to be roll called. Tonight? Okay. On Thursday. On Thursday. And then what about 22-99? We'll have to give the, um, give the uh, council uh, a chance to uh, weigh in on it. Oh, okay. Uh, Madam President, if I may. Yes, go right ahead. Um, I, I would ask that 22-99 be voted on prior to 22-98 uh, because 22-99 is actually the one that allows us to do 2298 by title only so that we don't have to read every line of the budget. Okay. So that would be a uh, 2299 would be a roll call vote. So both of them, 2298 and 2299, he wants 2299 to be roll called first. Okay. Now we're going to move forward to 22100. Yes. Resolution exercising the option to extend the contract for an additional one year awarded to Borden Perlman Insurance Agency, Inc. for broker insurance services from March 18th, 2022 to September 3rd, 2022 in an amount not to exceed a flat fee per year of 75000 per year. Uh, CC 2020-04. Does any council members, would, would anyone like to expound on 22100? So that would be a consent. That would be part of a consent. Okay. Twenty-two one hundred one is a resolution adopting a cash management plan for the deposit and investment of public funds of the city of Trenton. Um, this right here would be a roll call. Thanks. Hi, Madam President. 
Yes, go right ahead. I, I, I just wanted to say, just wanted to add on this resolution that this is actually a resolution that um, these, this is not a, a new uh, plan. This is actually the cash management plan that we have uh, ongoing with the city and is that uh, statutorily we have to adopt it every year. So this is why it comes up once a year only and then, you know, we continue moving forward. That is all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, 22102, resolution authorizing emergency appropriations to the CY 2022 temporary parking utility budget of the city of Trenton, the amount of $200,000. I think that has to be, I think that has to be roll called anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Resolution 22-103. A resolution authorizing settlement of a civil action. Well, that one we're going to discuss in closed session. So we want to move that to the end. That's yes. The settlement is going into executive session. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Council President, if I, if I may raise one point, um, uh, there is uh, as shown up for up the uh, executive session part. There is also another um, settlement that should be on here by way of resolution. So. Um, if I could speak with you about that executive session about possibly amending the resolution section to include that discussion, which is going to be had. Yeah, we'll discuss it in executive session since it's um, a, in reference to a settlement. It's still, it will fall under the guidelines. Am I correct, Mr. Kolozhi? Mr. Kolozhi? Edward Kolozhi? All right. I'm sorry, Council President, I was muted. That's correct. You may continue, Ms. Uh, Penny Carter. 22-104, resolution author authorizing the award of a contract with the law office of Eric M. Bernstein and Associates, LLC, to provide professional legal services regarding insurance litigation and insurance matters through a fair and open process in accordance with NJSA 19-44A-20.5-EDSEC for a period of one year from January 1, 2022 to December 31, 2022 in an amount not to exceed $100,000. And there was a request for professional services 20-21-57. Council President. Go right ahead. Mr. Burgess. If this contract, um, I'm, I'm assuming, this is from January the 1st, why is it coming to us so late? Um, there was some um, discussion uh, had uh, with council president and some and separately with other council members. Um, this firm is handling um, some pieces of litigation um, that are ongoing. In addition to that, um, uh, this firm will be assuming many of the um, matters that prior counsel who um, were not successful in getting awards, they're going to be assuming a lot of those matters. Um, so based on um, the, the, the co contracts that were approved by counsel and based off of the matters that are coming in, this firm is going to be needed to not only continue doing the um, matters that they have pending trials coming up, but they're also going to be assuming a, a litany of cases from um, three or four firms that have to transfer yeah, I, files. I, I actually don't need to know all that, that. I was just concerned about the the contract term. I mean, when did the RPA go out for these people and when did the contract, when did you finally select the contract? Because we're, you know, we're now in April. Yeah, the, this was part of the uh, RFP the, that the council um, voted on for the other firms that are handling litigation matters. We had the, the long list, if you recall, of um, firms uh, to be considered by council. Um, the, the, this is part of that RFP. So this is retroactive to January? It's That's correct. And it's for work that has been going going. That's correct. So they had a prior contract? Yes, they did. So, um, so if they had a prior contract, I, I, I don't mean to be picky, but why is it? Why didn't this come to us in December? 
it 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 this this firm this firm came to you along with the other firms that were placed before this council. This firm was unsuccessful in being approved at, at that time when all the other firms were being voted on. Um, based on follow up conversations um, that, that I had in emails that I circulated, this firm is handling many ongoing litigation matters that would be extremely expensive to reassign. In addition to that, this firm um, is situated and has the, the, the bench and the expertise to be able to assume the cases that four other firms who weren't approved, um, who have to have their cases transferred and, and, and brought up to speed in a very short period of time, are going to be able to handle. So they, this, was, this was put before you and is being put back before you again based on follow-up conversations and the need to have them back before the, this council. Yeah, but I, basically what I wanted to know was if this council um, did not vote for this contract and this was removed, why didn't another RFP go out? Um, the, because the timing for the RFP is, is, is still proper. This is being brought back before this council pursuant to that RFP and based on um, uh, follow-up conversations following the initial vote. So, so, Mr. Bridges, what I'm saying to you is I don't have an issue with them needing this contract for the work that they have to do, but I, I certainly only speak for myself. But when contracts are up, and, and the RFPs, the RFPs come in before the contract is up. When you come before council, you need to be up front with us and say, look, their contract is up in December 31st, you know. Yeah. If no. this doesn't get approved, it has to go back out for RFP. You just can't come back months later and ask for a retroactive contract. No, no. And, Regardless and I, of what they do. Yeah, no, and, and I appreciate that. And, and if, you were, if you may recall... Um, even the contracts that were put up and approved by this council, they unfortunately, due to circumstances which is beyond anybody's control, they were retroactive. Those contracts were approved until last month, and those firms were continuing, <laughs> were continuing to do you know ongoing work. The reality is, while yes, in a perfect world, we would be able to s seamlessly have a meeting January 1st of every year, to approve them, that that would be great. But you know, due to due to timing, no, due I'm to not timing. talking about having a meeting to approve in January first because contract dates are different; they vary. All I'm saying is that I would like to see contracts come to us in a timely manner and be voted on a timely manner. I've never, I, I've never, I've always been opposed to doing this retroactive stuff. I, I understand, and been, I will continue to do my best to get them as timely to in, in as timely fashion as possible. I mean, isn't that isn't that the contract law that you put the RFP out, the contract comes in, and um, you 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 pick a contract and you bring it before council? Yep. But you know, you, you need to have a a, a tickler file to alert you when these when these RFPs need to go out. Yeah, these are, yes, I, I, everything you said is correct. These RFPs do go out timely. These RFPs are prepared timely, but, but due to, again, circumstances that are beyond sometimes our collective control, we don't have meetings uh, the, on the time that we have it or we have uh, other pressing issues that are not put on. This, uh, so. Well, this is the first year we've had issues with meetings, and we won't go into that. But Yeah, no, I, 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 but I, appreciate, I appreciate what you're saying, and we will work to, to get these done timely. Okay, thank you. Madam President, Councilman Rodriguez would like to speak. Go right ahead. Uh, this is one of those tricky ones that the administration throws at us. They change the, the number, but it's the same resolution that we voted down. Uh, so when we vote down resolutions, you know, why are we... We don't need to see this resolution. This should be stripped up because it's not. It was voted down, and the you know he, the the law directors speech about it. It has nothing to do with with the administration trying to change the number of a resolution to stick it to us again as a new issue when it's an old issue that we already voted down. Can we get the, uh, Mr. Ecology to see if it's legal for them to bring it back two, two months after that was rejected? 
Is it Pelagi? Yes, I'm here. We've already I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hear the counselor's request. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear your request. Well, resolution 22104 is the same resolution that we voted down a couple of months ago under a different number. It, it, and they try to disguise it as a new resolution. Uh, uh, they keep on doing this over and over, you know, and uh, uh, taking us for like, I don't know why they do that, change the number, <laughs> the same same issue, the same attorney, <laughs> the same uh, uh, explanation that Mr. Bridges says, uh, because those contracts, they have to finish it. But now they are going to add more contracts to the, uh, to, to the same company that we uh, have been refusing over and over. You know, is this legal, what they're doing? And, and, and if I'll I may add to that, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. If I may add to yeah. that, I, I, I uh, thought... I, 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 I have not said that you can stop. Uh, <laughs> like to, it, it is my, it's my turn. You already did your talking. Yeah, but, but, but all I was going to point out is I, I just said no, on the no, record no, 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 that this no, no. was Excuse the contract me. that was out of order. Object. You are out of order. This was the con I said on the record. This you was the contract that was voted down. Mr. Kologi, can you answer? Yes, I will review it, Mr. Uh, Councilman Rodriguez, and I will respond to you. I, I ask for this to be then tabled indefinitely, whatever. Because this is, it, it should not be in this talk at all. You have to table Thursday. Okay. But just put a, a note there. This is Edward. This is going to be tabled. Are they saying table on Thursday? Mm -hmm. yeah. There will be a motion to be Hopefully by Thursday they pull it up. You may continue, Ms. Penny Carter. Uh, resolution 22-105, a resolution awarding a contract through a fair and open process in accordance with NJ, NJSA 19-44A-20.4 at SEC, awarded to Trenton Animal Rock for Animal Welfare Services for a period of one year from April 8, 2022 to April 7, 2023, for the City of Trenton, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Trenton Humane Law Enforcement and Animal Services in an amount not to exceed $375,000 with the RFP number 2022-07. Uh, go, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Wall. Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. Um, Council President, do I have the floor? Yes, go right ahead. I would like this to be uh, roll called. Uh, uh, I have gotten so <laughs> many complaints about this particular contractor. So many complaints. I have a whole email folder full of complaints. And I have a folder that, uh, that are also in favor or, or spoke very well of the organization, but the negative ones far exceed positive ones. And the negative ones uh, are, uh, are very concerning. Folks have a lot of concerns about how this particular vendor is operating the Trenton Animo Shelter. Uh, there are a lot of issues with compliances, compliance with the laws, um, keeping uh, the disease level down, having the right certified folks working over there, um, making sure that the facility is adequate to even house the animal, and the management appears to be unstable. If I'm getting complaints that the management is on social media crying and cursing and doing all these things that is not representative of 
the Trenton Animal Shelter or the City of Trenton. If folks care about the brand of our city and how council behaves or how the mayor behaves, then we have to have the equal standard applied to our vendors. So vendors just can't come in here and get a contract and think they, their, their conduct does not adhere, adhere to city policies. So when you get a contract with the city of Trenton or any organization, you sign on with the policies of that organization. And the city of Trenton has a code of conduct. And you got to behave a certain way. And there's a lot of people, a lot of folks inside our borders and outside our borders that complained about this thing is organized animal uh, animals rock. So I have some serious concerns about this organization. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm going to have a difficult time supporting it. Because the, the stack of emails, I got a complaint. <coughs> I, I even had to guide an uh, individual. I included the mayor on that communication. That, you know, folks are saying, Ms. Vaughn, I have contacted the mayor. I have contacted Dr. Uh, Adele Lopez, who's a director of Health and Human Services, where the, anim the Trenton Animal Shelter falls under her governance and purview. So we're talking about directors doing their job. Directors are appointed officials, paid by the taxpayers. They must, they have an obligation, a fiduciary responsibility to the city to do their jobs in their respective capacity. And Dr. Adele Lopez is falling short here, majorly. So I had to make recommendations to individuals contacting me, contacting the mayor, contacting Dr. Adele. They have not gotten any responses. I had to tell them, look, you have to, if you believe that there's, that this organization is acting unlawfully and they're not properly certified to run that facility or get this contract with our government, then you need to go to the attorney general's office and file a criminal complaint with them and get an investigation over there. That's what I said. So I'm, this thing needs to be pulled because I know all my other council members got the same complaints. Because again, I sent this to the mayor himself. And in there, I noted to that, to the mayor that he needs to notify Dr. Adele Lopez that I am recommending to a constituent that they also not only forward their complaint to us, because we haven't done anything, the mayor has not done anything, he hasn't acted. So I said, look, if you're not getting action from the mayor who runs the city, I am one-seventh of the council person. I can't help you. But what I can do is tell you, like Judge Get Jacobson told me when, when the mayor took the council to court, Judge Jacobson said, look, the mayor said, Robin Vaughn can't contact any entity. I'm the mayor of the city. I'm the only one who can go contact an outside entity. And Jacobson's response was, Robin Vaughn can contact the outside entity if she believes that there is malfeasance and that there is criminal activity going on in the city of Trenton. So I told this particular individual, and I wrote it to the mayor, that you need to go to the attorney general's office, Thomas Eichner, who is the, the executive director of um, the department of, uh, what is it, um, the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability. Uh, the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability when we believe there's crime and corruption going on in this city. So that's all I'm going to say about that, Council President. So I will roll call that, and uh, but I won't be voting for it. But I would want the other council members to seriously consider this organization, and perhaps Dr. Adele Lopez can speak to these uh, issues uh, to give the city the confidence <coughs> that she has a handle over her job responsibility. Because right now, she's not doing her job. Thank you, Council President. Another President. Go right ahead, Councilman Santiago. Uh, well, I have concerns about this number, $375,000. I, I think we had this issue before, a couple of months ago. And also, uh, this Trenton uh, Animal Charter should be changed to 
probably New Jersey or half of New Jersey animal shelter because most of most of Trentonians that have pets they don't let them loose in the streets. I know that for a fact. Uh, most of dogs, do especially dogs, they are coming from other townships to Trenton because the Trenton Health Department have not enforced the rules of uh, all this garbage and food thrown out. There's food all over in Trenton, uh, especially dogs. Dogs uh, smell food miles away. That means if, if you let a dog uh, loose in Hope World, he will come straight to Trenton, from Hamilton straight to Trenton, from Lawrenceville straight, from all over the area, even from Morrisville, they cross the bridge and come to Trenton. You know, and we need to enforce that, that, that ordinance. If we enforce the ordinance, we wouldn't have many uh, uh, pets coming to Trenton if there was no food for them to eat. Also, yeah, we have to establish some uh, way of identifying those dogs. I believe in the past they have to have a little identification, something, a caller with identification, so that we will know if they are city, they are coming from the city, or where they are coming from. You know, we have been, uh, we get the homeless from the state, we need the, we get the homeless animals from the state, and we have to do something about that. I believe this organization, they should uh, ask Hamilton, Ewing, Lawrence, all these townships for money to run the, 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 their program because, you know, they, we, we pay for that. But I tell you because I, I, I drive around the city continuously and most of these animals are not from Trenton. They are coming from the townships. Thank you. Council President. Go right ahead. Um, you know, for years this city has never paid attention to the Trenton Animal Shelter. As a matter of fact, they've neglected it. They had a bare bones budget. The place was falling apart. And now through the years we've been able to get some repairs done. And, you know, I just feel that, you know, we have certain council members that, that want to put animal welfare in the back, on the back burner. And I say shame on you because we have finally have an organization that is actually taking care of these animals, finding them homes, performing surgery on them, getting them off the streets, taking care of them so that we don't have a health hazard or a danger to children on the streets with stray animals. And, I, you know, I say shame on you if you have major issues with with um the city and, and the laws and talking to excuse me. me excuse me why is she talking about Co my opinion? councilwoman Vice. i said excuse nothing me. about your opinion or your advocacy council president i have the floor Council, councilwoman vaughn please allow her yes, to complete her but uh, please, please don't councilwoman have the vaughn. floor because don't let me have to go in a march for all the well. I will go in on her. I will shut her the, down. She will wish she never said her. anything about my advocacy. I will shut Council you Woman down. Councilwoman Bond, you are out of line here. No, I am not. You, She's out of line. Are, yes, you are. She was pointing to my... I, I did not mention her advocacy. Councilwoman Bond, you do not have the floor. Well, I just said what I said. I said what I said. Go ahead, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. You know, I mean, that's that's a disgraceful behavior for Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. You're the disgrace, Council. Uh, you do not talk about my. You know what? I did Ms. not. Penny, talk Ms. About Penny her Carter, advocate. is there someone in there that could mute Councilwoman Vaughn because she's out of line? No, you're out of line, Councilman. I mean, I, 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 never, I didn't interrupt you, Ms. Vaughn, so I would like to keep I didn't talk speaking. about you. I did not talk about you, though. You talked about me. I didn't mention your name. Come, uh, Councilwoman Vaughn, please. Go right ahead, Councilwoman All I'm Vaughan. saying we'll is, if the council has an issue... No, that's not all where you were saying. You said you were you know what? about my comments. If council has an issue with, the, with how they shelter is being managed and what's going on that's one thing 
But my concern is taking these animals, getting these animals off the street and taking care of them and getting them out of the community so that they do not cause infection, they don't bite children, and they, they're, they're, they're not causing a health hazard. And as much as I do care about the animal's welfare. So uh, all I'm saying is that you just can't shut down an operation while you're trying to litigate how that shelter is being run. And I know that the majority of those complaints are coming from people in Hamilton Township. They need to pay attention to their own shelter. Thank you. This will be roll called. Okay. Next, Ms. Council President. Yes, go right ahead, Councilman Harris. Yes, uh, I, I would agree uh, with uh, with uh, Vice Chair uh, Caldwell Wilson. Um, the uh, Trent Animal Rocks they do a lot of work. Um, the building, actually, they need a bigger building. To be truthful, um, but they do a lot of work. And at the end of the day, um, we I, I kind of feel the same way uh, Ms. Caldwell Wilson does that uh, the animals. Um, need to advocation, just like we, we advocate for the people of this great city, we should advocate for um, doing the best that we can for the animals. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. You may continue, Ms. Uh, Carter. Uh, resolution 22-106, a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for the 2021 recycling tonnage grant with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Could be a part of the consensus, consent, consent, excuse me, <laughs> consent agenda. Okay. Resolution 22-107, resolution authorizing the city of Trenton to apply and accept grant monies up to the amount of $300,000 from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority's Brown Fields impact fund for use at the former federated metal site 300 enterprise avenue it could be part of the consent agenda Twenty two dash one oh eight resolution awarding a contract through a fair and open process in accordance with the in with njsa 19 colon 44 a dash 20.4 at SEC to Brownfield Redevelopment Solutions, Inc. for a period of one year from time of award for environmental planning, grant management, and technical consulting and environmental project management. Trenton Brownfield program in an amount not to exceed $100,680, an RFP um, 2021-2024. Roll call. Madam President. Okay. Go right ahead. You well, say roll well, call? The same, same BRS, yes. BRS company. Now they are going to get more money on the side. This is related to the, then we're going to get, we're going to get 300,000. And then out of those 300,000, we're going to give uh, BRS uh, 100,000 already. Uh, God, least, you know, what is going on? Thank you. you may continue, Ms. Carter. Resolution 22-109, a resolution authorizing the City of Trenton Department of Housing and Economic Development to accept a Home Investment Partnership American Rescue Plan Home-ARP grant amount and grant award in the amount of $3,228,324 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Uh, Council President, can we roll call? Yes, that? go right ahead. And I just want to know, right. uh, do we have uh, what the plan is for that money, for that $3 million? What's the plan for that money? Can the business administrator ask my question? Mr. Cruz. Madam, Madam President. Yes. Um, I would, if you uh, would permit, offer that to director daniels um, this falls under his uh, department uh, director daniels if you could um, make a comment about that that program absolutely with the permission of council president yes go right ahead mr daniels 
Okay, this is a $3 million grant to build uh, permanent housing for the homeless in the city of Trenton. Um, an initial $100,000 will be used to create a plan. Um, it should be noted that um, the, the consultant uh, who will be writing the plan um, will be on the April 16 docket. It should also be noted that the funding for this will sunset on September 2030. Uh, this money um, is, is not to be uh, considered part of the American, the $73 million that the city of Trenton will be getting under the American Rescue, uh, Re American Re Recovery Plan. It's separate and apart. Okay, so what, so what homeless, what, what housing is this going to fund? What housing and what blocks and street is this going to fund? Well, that's to be determined, ma'am. Um, what we would really like to do is have housing, a permanent solution, um, and we would like to uh, not have one particular building or one particular place where just homeless are. We would like to have them, um, quite frankly, uh, around the city, uh, given our... Um, I like to use neighbors without addresses, an opportunity to, quite frankly, realize uh, the American dream and be fully absorbed back into the community as best as possible. Okay, so what, where's your plan to do that? Where's well, your plan to do that? I'm asking you directly, it's $3 million coming into the city. I want to know what your plan is for it. I don't okay. want to hear a pie-in-the-sky uh, uh, answer. What are you going to do with 3.2 million? You said you're going to use 100 grand of it to hire a consultant to do the plan. So, what is the consultant? I mean, what what is the uh, the vision for the 3.2 million? Right, ma'am. I can't answer that question yet because uh, it uh, so answer this question then. What are there any restrictions on the monies from the from the Department of Treasury, Treasury, the U.S. Department of Treasury? Because it is the ARPA fund, so usually they have some guidelines as to what you can do with the funds. So what are those guidelines? Of course. So preservation of affordable housing, tenant-based rental assistance, supportive services for the homeless, prevention services, and uh, housing counseling, and purchase and development of non-congregate shelters. Okay, so that means per, uh, um, rental assistance, purchase assistance. So we should be telling the community that this money is coming. It's, it's coming here, or it's here already, and that they could have, there's a program for them to apply for this funds, for these funds, right? Rather, they need it for their rental assistance. So have you done that yet? Have you done community outreach to let the folks know that this money is available for their access? No, ma'am, that has not happened. Okay, so we, for we have to write the plan, then submit okay, to Okay, no, you don't have to write the plan. Uh, for I understand <coughs> you got to write the what, Mr. Daniels. I understand you got to write the plan. So I'm, what I'm asking you is, so I'm talking about community outreach. So you can still notify the residents that the money is here, and that these are this is the what this is what the intent is. This is what it's earmarked for. So if you need help, Trentonians, with help with rental assistance, if you need help with purchasing a home, because um, it says it's to minimize homelessness, right? To do these things, if you need shelter, then come and apply. So I, all I'm saying is engage the community, get the notifications out, the communications, get out to the people that this money is available to them. And I would like to see the list of applicants who applied for this 3.2 million because uh, we don't need we don't need a third party here to uh, uh, allocate this money. We don't need it to go to some nonprofit organization, and they never get the money down to the people that it was earmarked for. So I need you, I need you, Mr. Uh, Daniels, to get out there and tell our residents that this money is here for them to help them with the, the need, with their needs. Okay, that's all. Absolutely. So on Thursday, Absolutely. please come with a at least 
a high level plan. You can do a high level plan. You don't have to be a. You don't have, doesn't have to be a detail. But you certainly can give the council an attached high level plan. So, so Council President McBride, can you uh, roll call this, please? And, and pending oh, yeah. the high level plan that how how he's going to do community outreach and and the schedule of the outreach and notifying the the people of the city that this money is here for for their access. Madam President. Yes, go right ahead, Councilman Rodriguez. Well, the same I said about uh, the dogs, the homeless dogs, the same happens with the homeless in Trenton. The majority, Mr. Daniels, are you going to make sure that those are Trenton homeless, not the whole state homeless that come? And, and, and right now, I, 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 I'm in touch with a couple of uh, senior citizen centers in Trenton, and they have been inundated by those same homeless that are coming from all the areas of the state. And the uh, uh, senior centers, they say, oh, we cannot deny them an apartment, but how about our, our people that need, our low-income people that need those, those monies for rental assistance or to get a house? to help them fix a house or to pay uh, uh, their back taxes. How about using that money for that? You know, that this this thing is, you know, same as the commissions, the kitchen, the same thing. You know, people come from all over the state to New Horizons in on Perry Street or to all, all, the, the, uh, all of these drug programs that we have. We have a bunch of them in Trenton outpatient drug programs all over the city. I, I know because I used to work with them. And but the majority of the people that get services they they are not Trentonians. The majority of the people that you live uh, the, you see hanging downtown, they are not Trentonians. They co are coming from other cities. You know how Mr. Daniel, how are you going going to identify, make sure that they are our homeless because if they are not homeless, their towns to be responsible the same way as the dogs. Their towns to be responsible, not Trenton. Can you answer my question? Uh, are you going to be identified each one of those uh, homeless with their last addresses? Find out where they were living. The last addresses, Mr. Daniels. To, an to answer you, to answer you, Councilman uh, Rodriguez, that's part of the plan. Um, at this present time, there, I mean, it, it would be almost impossible to ascertain um, who might be coming in and, and who we might be engaging. Uh, I, I can say this, that, it, you know, this money is earmarked for Trenton and we will, you know, definitely uh, outreach will be going directly to uh, those, those uh, our neighbors without addresses that are from Trenton. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Can we take, um, can we remove that from the screen until we uh, finish up our docket, please? It's my screen. I can put anything I want on my screen. It's a free, it's, oh. it's not, this is my screen. Oh, if I okay. want to share my picture, I can share this if I want to. Well, well I, I can still need to see the docket. We still need to I see, see the I docket. Can still see the, I can see the docket. Oh, I see. We can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was just my screen. I'm sorry. Apologies. What's going on? Folks didn't like my screen share. Thank you. <laughs> um, resolution 22-110. Resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to IBN Construction Corporation for democracy demolition of various structures under the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG program, and neighborhood redevelopment and revitalization pilot, NRRP program phase two, in an amount not to exceed $290,325 per bid 2022-01. This, this resolution was tabled I believe I don't understand why it's back on the docket. Okay, so this this was tabled. Okay, so I should remove this. It was it. This was tabled, and why I don't understand why it's back here. 
because the administration doesn't have the right to, to put it back if it's tabled. So um, um, we'll uh, get some guidance from Mr. Kaloji. Yeah, I will follow up with the clerk tomorrow. 22-11. Yes. All righty. Okay, 22-111 resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to IBN Construction Corporation for construction services for the neighborhood redevelopment and revitalization pilot program for vacant properties on Sanford Street, Trenton, New Jersey, in an amount not to exceed $599,331 per bid, 2021-66. Uh, Council President? Go right ahead. Uh, this is the same company, IBN Construction. Mm -hmm. So I would want this uh, tabled as well. Um, it appears they just broke the monies up in half. Yep. Um, so that, in my opinion, is same resolution. So, um, Council, Council they, they, uh, you know, the administration, no, I'm speaking. So, uh, I asked for the floor. It was granted to me. So, uh, Council President, I would like this to be tabled along with its predecessor, 22111. It's the same company. And I just want to add about this company. IBN uh, Construction is located in Newark. New Jersey. It's located in Essex County. Now I've done said this many of times on you know in these meetings. You know I'm a, I'm an advocate for local hiring and local contracting, and that means within our borders and with our contiguous <coughs> townships. There's no reason for the mayor to offer this contract close to a million dollar contract in Essex County. That money will never come back into our borders. So it makes no sense. It's, 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 it's criminal, okay, straight up. That money will never come back in the city and, that's the, that's, and, and I will not be supporting it. I will never support giving our money to Essex County or any county that's not Mercer, or the counties that is contiguous to the Mercer borders. And there's no reason we can't find a construction company within Trenton to give that million dollars to. I know a construction company, we did give them a small contract. We got PJ Finch. I'd rather have them have that contract, a million dollar contract. I'm sure they would want it. No way. In this council, they vote for that. Shame. When we talk about economic development. We talk about investing in Trenton. We're talking about getting rid of blight. Well, that's a surefire way for that not to happen. We're talking about a, a, a decrease in crime and gun violence. Well, when you put a million dollars into another county that's miles and borders away, that never comes back to your city, where young men like uh, the young man, uh, Isaiah Roberts, young men like Jawan Henderson can't get a job. They can get a job on this multi-million dollar contract. They don't have to stay on the street 24 seven waiting for some cop to push up on them. So the mayor should be ashamed of himself, and I'm sick of this coming to me on this diet council's president where uh, contracts are going miles and miles and sometimes out of state of, the, of our borders. So that's all I have to say about that. Uh, it needs to be tabled, and, uh, and I yield my time. Council president, if I might. No, Mr. Um, no, we're going to move on um, through this docket. Um, go right ahead. Ms. Penny Carter. What what is the resolution that's, of that's that's she on on Thursday she wants to table it. 
Okay. So, um, when we get to Thursday's uh, meeting, we'll uh, go through that process. But now okay. let's move through the docket. 22-112, resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to PMY Construction Corporation for demolition services at various locations throughout the city of Trenton for the neighborhood revitalization and rehabilitation pilot program in an amount not to exceed $728,400 per bid 2022-07. Uh, uh, Council President, um, we're talking, uh, I can't even see, what is this? Uh, where, where, where are we? We're still on 112? I thought I'd just um, table that. No, it's a different resolution. Oh, uh, oh, I see, 22112. Oh, yeah, so um, that's for 728000 Yes. To PMY Construction Corp? So, um, Mr. Cruz, is he, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, so Mr. Cruz, can you just share with the public uh, a little bit about PMY? Construction Corp. Can you um, tell us where they're located? Uh, if you give me one, <clears throat> let me let me get the uh, the resolution, Madam President, if I may. Yes, go right ahead, Mr. Cruz. Thank you. Uh, PNY uh, construction was a a low bidder out of six resolution out of six bidders. I didn't ask you that. Uh, as you Mr. are, as, 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 as you are, I asked. You are, uh, I, I, as, ask, I asked where the location was. Period. The right, state so law I'm, requires I'm, that right, we put it out I'm to done, bid, done, and and, to, and there are six count, there were six bids. Hey, okay. council president, I don't need them. So I'm going to tell the people. I would like this roll call. Uh, PMY Construction Company Corporation is in Bergen County. <laughs> Bergen County. Man, oh man. That's like by the George Washington Bridge. Uh, and Lynn, Lynn Hurst, New Jersey. Now, you tell me what construction company, Demolition Company, going to bring their equipment all the way down to uh, Trenton from Bergen County. Mm -hmm. So, Council President, I mean, I don't even know what to say, but they say they're for Trenton. They say they're for Trentonians. They say they're for redevelopment. They say they're for getting our city fiscally healthy. They say they want blight out of our city, but they're continuing to give money out of our city that will no longer get reinvested. So the shootings will continue. Our young men will continue without jobs and not be able to work on contracts. Our re-entering citizens who come out of prison will continue to not have jobs and they will continue to be homeless. So don't come here talking to me about gun violence and turning the city around when we have a mayor who wants to give millions of dollars to Bergen County and Essex County. Businesses out of there and none of you come here and talk about that don't stop playing with me politics okay so uh, politics politics is yes politics when you want to give money to entities that support your politics that that's in Bergen County and Essex County that's politics so and state statute councilwoman see, I would love to see who donates, who gets those donations. Robin Vaughn ain't getting them. So Robin Vaughn ain't no politician. I don't get donations from construction companies. We are That's following the, mayor, the state statute, friend. Councilwoman. It's a state statute that requires that we award it okay. to the lowest bidder. I, I'm not talking about the state, but the state statute says you It's a state look, statute. Uh, when you it's can, you're supposed statute. to hire local, my friend. Whether you like it or not, you it's a state statute. Job. You, you, you are no, a, you do your job. You are okay. a epic okay, fail listen. as a business administrator. Let's, epic fail. Let's, let's stay on the point. State so, to the uh, resolution. My, my point is made. You can't challenge me on that. 
You hire local, or you go back to Perth Amboy, my my friend. Um, Miss Miss Penny Carter, will you? Yes. Uh, that's going to be a uh, roll call for for um, Politics. Thursday. Okay. Council, Council, Council President, this is Director Daniels. May I have a point of privilege? Mr. Daniels, I need to move this docket right along on um, 22-113, Ms. Penny Carter. 22-113, resolution to approve a Trenton emergency loan in the amount not to exceed $10,000 to the conservatory NJ LLC doing business as the conservatory mansion. So I wanted I wanted to speak to this before okay. um, I, I wanted to speak to this because I was reading the backup information to this one one uh, twenty two dash one one three and the uh, people that um, own this conservatory they had put in for a UEZ loan of twenty thousand uh, dollars and um, the decision was made to loan them ten. Well, the problem that I have with that is that we had already received the 36 point some odd million that should have been going to infuse the businesses in the city. The, U, the first round of the UEZ funding were forgiven and they went out as loans and turned into a grant. Why is it that a local business, a resident here in the city, applies for $20,000, which, which under the American Rescue Fund, they should have really asked for fifty to 100000 to save their business. And they're only, they're only approved for $10,000. That's not what the American Rescue Funds was supposed to infuse our businesses, infuse our businesses and assist the people in this city living under the poverty level. But that is not what is taking place with that American Rescue money. We need to rethink this resolution 22-113, and she needs to be given the entire amount that she asked for. She asked for $20,000. There is no way she should not have received it. Now, Mr. Daniels, if you would like to speak to 22-113, I, I would like to speak first, Council President. Hmm? I would like to speak first for Mr. Daniels. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Daniels. I still would like you to speak to this at the Councilwoman Vaughn. Go ahead, Councilwoman Vaughn. So I will concur with you, and I will also ask that that um, that uh, that amend that that an amendment be made to increase the amount to twenty thousand, add the additional ten thousand, and I want the council to approve that. Um, we did it for uh, I think Councilman Rodriguez asked for a 40,000 increase on a resolution. 35. 35 on a, another resolution, and we approve that. I think it's fair that we should move to increase this one to 10,000. I concur with you. Thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. And Council President, that would be, I would uh, would ask that you um, move us to motion that and, 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 and make that increase in lieu of whatever Mr. Daniels is going to say, which is going to be nothing. Excuse me, Councilwoman. Um, Mr. Daniels, could you speak to this 113, this 22-113? Yes, Council President. Um, I, I do not stand opposed to the Councilwoman Bond's uh, amended uh, amendment of uh, $20,000. It was initially, uh, this was uh, initially disapproved, denied by the New Jersey Community Capital Underwriters. Uh, they recommended denying the loan. Uh, subsequently, uh, we in the department, um, in consultation with uh, the, the person who oversees economic development, 
um, uh, agreed that this uh, vendor um, should receive uh, $10,000 at the very least. We stood behind her, uh, and quite frankly, we stand behind um, the additional monies that has just been uh, added by way of uh, amended res amendment to the resolution. So I, I do not stand opposed to it. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that, Mr. Uh, Daniels. I really do, um, because every time we come to doing business for our community, our businesses are 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 um, are failing here in the city. They're closing their doors, and in come May, we will have went through seventy three odd million dollars, but none of our businesses are thriving. In the do in the borders of this city, and and that doesn't seem to be our top priority when it should be. So I appreciate uh, um, the support, and I appreciate the um, increased amount to the original loan. And Councilman Rodriguez, um, if you wanted to speak, um, yes, I want to speak about the conservatory. I know them very well. The services that they do for our children, uh, they. Not twenty thousand dollars, which would give them probably a hundred thousand dollars. I have been involved with the conservatory for years, and they they have a music programs there for uh, inner city uh, kids, disadvantaged kids. That's what they do: cultural activities. They let, uh, as a matter of fact, from the Latino community, we we heard many activities at their local. We didn't have to pay any penny; just go there. You know, I believe that we should reconsider this. And the reason they are, they were all, uh, only asking for twenty thousand is because of the deniers. They are afraid that they, if they ask for more than twenty thousand, they're going to be denied. So, the same way I ask for an amendment for the the other that house that's going to be whatever the issue that we uh, refer to the thirty five thousand dollars. I believe that we should award the um, 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 Marsh Carr, which should concur with me, the conservatory, we should award them a quite good amount of the American Rescue Plan money. We are going to get more money from there, the other, whatever, 70, 70 some thousand, uh, 70 some million dollars. So instead of giving them to these nonprofits that mm -hmm. don't do anything for Trenton, the conservatory uh, should get as much money as we can. Not $20,000. That's pennies for the use they could give to that, to that uh, location. They have a, a nice building there, a nice program, or we should help them to enlarge that program, to cover more of our disadvantaged children. From so, 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 so on Thursday, what I'll do is I'll make a motion on Thursday to to table this resolution. And what we want to do is we want to have a conversation with Mr. Daniels, uh, Ms. Sally Samuels, and we want to talk about how we can increase this dollar amount for the conservatory. This is a business that is in within our borders. Um, the councilman has already spoke to the fact of what they do for our children in our borders. And I think that we really need to consider how we spend the second portion of that American rescue money because it was designed to infuse the businesses, the community, and the residents all in the city of Trenton. So I would, on Thursday, I'm going to move to, um, to table this to the next meeting so that we can find out from um, Director Daniels and from uh, Sally Samuels how we can help this business with uh, with a grant yes. and not a loan. I, don't, I agree. I'm tired of the businesses here getting loans when they should be getting grants. So I agree. We, we, we're going to we're going to talk about um, how we can um, increase that and make sure that she gets a grant for that building and be able to sustain that business. At least we will know that we have sustained at least one business here in the city of Trenton. I agree, Council President. I just want to say a few words with regard to that as Councilwoman Wilkins. 
Uh, the conservatory mansion, as I want to piggyback on uh, Councilwoman Vaughn and Councilman Santiago Rodriguez, they do excellent, excellent work in the city. <laughs> Um, I agree with what you're saying to table it and let's move forward to see what we can do for them in regards to getting them a grant and, of course, getting them an increase in grant uh, to assist that business to remain open. That business, uh, not only do they serve as children, they also do feedings. They feed the homeless. So there are many services that that uh, organization provides, but I just wanted to uh, make a few comments and concur. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so I'll move to table that on um, Thursday. Uh, Council Kennedy. President, Council President, I just want to make one comment about the loan and, and uh, loan versus the grant. Yes. Well, I know also with the UZ, what is it? It's the UEZ UEZ Urban Enterprise Zone. Well, right. Me. So let me just explain too. There is uh, there is a, 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 there are provisions. Who's making all that noise? Like mute yourself. So rude. So, um, the UEZ funds also have provisions for um, forgiving. So we can use that program, but many other businesses in the city that have gotten the, the, that, that source or got funded through that program also was forgiven. The loan was forgiven completely, 100%. So... Wherever we can get the money from to give them what they need uh, to ensure that they're adequately funded over at the conservatory, we should do it. But the UEZ uh, uh, program also uh, has a provision for loan forgiveness as well, that they don't have to pay it back. And um, I just want to say, <laughs> it's, I just find it ironic that New Jersey Community Capital denied this organization. And I want to just further say, there's another business downtown that got back-to-back -back funding from the UEZ program. 20,000, six months, and then six months later, later they came back and got and was granted another 20,000. So there's some disparity here between uh, when certain businesses get funded and other businesses do not. So there are disparities in this community, and there are some, there are racial disparities, and we need to stop that. And every time I know, and I and I and I and I see it. I'm going to call it out. So there are businesses that are owned by white people, get adequately funded, and now business who are operating by black and brown get rejected, and, and, and we are not given access. That's right. I will call it out every single time. Thank you, Councilwoman. Start Councilman. being fair. Council Start President. being fair. Start being fair. Council President. Go right ahead, Councilman uh, Harris. Um, um, if that's if to that's be true, true. I, I said if that's to be true, then why do why did we table the cannabis industry? The majority of the cannabis industry is um, locally is African American. Why are we tabling that? That should have never been tabled. That has nothing to do with this one one three. At the end of the no, we're talking about local local people in the city. No, we're talking we're about cannabis. Uh, a resolution one one three councilman. Look, I know what we're talking about, but okay, so what I'm saying is you're keep it to the resolution, yeah. please. I understand you you don't want to answer that question. It doesn't you fit your ask, narrative. You can it's ask okay. That question during your civic comment. Because it's not even true. <laughs> but you, it me, is true. You Ron. tabled it. It is true. You tabled Ms. it. Miss Miss Penny Minorities own cannabis business. Um, we, may we move on to uh resolution twenty two dash one fourteen, please. Um twenty three Miss Carter. Can we move on to twenty two dash one fourteen, please? Twenty two dash one one four resolution to approve a supplemental Trenton emergency loan in the amount not to exceed $5,000 to GK Enterprises, LLC, doing business okay. at Whitaker Bar and Liquors. Okay. Can we uh, roll call that one? Thank you, pardon? They want to roll call that. Councilman okay. Rodriguez. Roll call it. Uh, uh, the reason I, uh, I don't roll call is because, you know, I know that the liquor stores were not closed during COVID. They were selling 
you go in there with your mask and you buy you but they did very well very well during the, the pandemic you know uh, if it was a grocery mr. store all the type of stores yes but mr Colosi, could you mute yourself please that's right but, but the bar and liquors they they were doing they were doing very well in france um that's so that's ro um 114 it will be roll call and we will continue with 22115 mrs carter 22-115-115, resolution authorizing payment for a contract with Carroll Group, Inc., awarded for demolition services in the city of Trenton for demolition and removal of a two-and-a-half-story brick structure due to fire open roof areas and walls at the rear in a collapsed state located at 129 Calhoun Street in the amount of $40,420. Roll call. Yeah, Mother President. Let's get through this. Let's get through this docket. Um, yeah, yeah, no, but harder. I have to say, make a comment on this. Uh, yes. The Car Caro Group uh, is is a local business, right? Yes, it is in Hamilton, I believe. Yeah, but it's local compared to Newark, or um, probably they employ uh, Trentonians. Uh, but if you compare this to the other ones that are from Bergen County and that stuff, or they are getting they are getting forty. A contract of 40420 and uh, the others are getting thousands and thousands. And the really? ones from this area, they get peanuts. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Mr. President? We're going to move on. We're going to roll call that 22-115. And then we're going to move on to 116, please, Ms. Penny Carter. 22-116, resolution amending the funding account for resolution 20-644 awarded to MAC2 LLC in the amount of $1,550,000. I don't even know what that means. What, what are we amending? Yes. Can, can somebody explain that? This is the administrator. Mr. Cruz. Uh, Madam President, yes. So what is this about? Because the resolution doesn't say much and there's no backup. Um, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Uh, um, Carter, Carter, what is the resolution number? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Resolution number? Oh, um, 22-116. Okay. Amending funding account uh, for resolution. Okay, so um, they're they're switching the account number to the to a different account number. Uh, we are not um, we are not awarding a contract. It's simply moving um, to be able to make payment from one line to another. That that's all we're, that we're doing. So could you give us a little bit of background on? Uh, sure. I mean, I can I, I can read you the um, uh, the memo. <laughs> one second. Well, how do the, the memo is very self-explanatory. Uh, it we says don't, on a, we don't have the memo. We don't have uh, my apologies. But the resolution. Okay. Is, uh, All right. I, I'll read it onto the record. Uh, on October 2021, via resolution 20-644, a construction contract in the amount of 5.5 million, five million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars was awarded to Pat Two LLC to complete the raw water intake improvements. The contract funding plan was as follows. Uh, we were going to be using $3 million from a capital fund account, uh, number C as in Charlie, dash 06, dash 20, dash 55, dash 0, 24, C as in Charlie, dash 301. Uh, we were using an additional two million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the fiscal year budget operating budget of the 2022 fiscal year um, during the transition year one million dollars was encumbered in account 2-05-55-5500-899 as part of the fiscal year 2022 operating budget commitment listed above the Department of Water requests that the remaining balance of the fiscal year 2022 operating budget 
1,550,000 be encumbered using capital accounts. So we are going, we're moving away from using the uh, operating budget amount of 1,550,000 to switching it to a capital account. Uh, and uh, the contract amount does not increase. We are only going, we're, we're moving away from using the operating budget to the capital budget for this. All right. We can, 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 we can roll uh, by this. We'll um, go ahead, yeah, please. Um, so, um, Ms., uh, Mr. Cruz, if you can yes. get us a copy of that, if Ms. Penny Carter has it, she needs to send it out so that we can okay. actually look at the actual wording. Uh, 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 Council President? Yes. I'm looking at the 2020-64 uh, 20, 20 uh, resolution that was passed back in 2020, and... It is uh, it's, six four six six hundred and forty four. Yeah, six hundred and forty four. And it does say okay. using the capital budget, the capital and operating. Uh yes. So we were using three million dollars of the capital and then we were using two million five hundred and fifty thousand from the operating budget. So what we're doing is that we are only spending one million dollars of the operating budget from that second line and we are used we are switching the rest the 1,550 to capital now if i remember correctly this is from the water department right correct if yes. i remember correctly i mean i could be wrong but isn't it wasn't this funded through a bond uh, half uh, partially yes three million dollars <coughs> was used through a capital fund so but it's it's five point it's it's five million five hundred and fifty. I remember that I believe this yeah. was one of the um I believe this was funded. I don't know which bond, but I remember now it's coming back to me. But yeah, re, uh, roll call it, and I'll just do a little research before Thursday's meeting. Okay, and and we'll provide you the uh, the backup um, um, to all. And, we'll and can you back. provide the bond that that was used? Uh, yes. We will include the bond ordinance as well. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Mother, Mother President. Mr. Kurz, I already question. have the backup, so I don't need it. Okay. Mother Thank President, you. President, a quick question. Uh, was that project completed or not? What's the status on the project? That's what I, I'd like to know the answer for that. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lavenberg, are you on the line? Oh, no, you can, send it, you can send it through the email. No problem. Send okay. it to everybody on the email. Okay, thank All you. All right, moving, moving right along to 22-117. 22-117, resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to Atlantic Coast Commerce, Com Commerce Inc. for the furnish and delivery of FOB of Fludge, Fludge Blanket Palmer for a period of one year from April 8, 2022 to April 7, 2023 an amount not to exceed $198,120 under a bid number 2022-26. Consent. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, is it 38? Okay, very good. I'm sorry. This is Fludge. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, we may continue with 22-118. 22-118, resolution authorizing a contract award to Al Algera Princeton for paint printing and mailing services, including certified mail preparation on an as needed, as needed basis for a period of one year from April 8, 2022 to April 7, 2023, awarded through Educational Services Commission of New Jersey, EFCNJ 21-22-02, in an amount not to exceed $140,148.90. Madam President, right I, want to, I want to roll for that, but I have a question. You know, why are we paying this amount? Couldn't we do Councilman, those services I can't hear you. home? Couldn't we do those services in home? That question is to Mr. Lavingberg. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Rodriguez, um, I'm having trouble hearing you as well. Your question was? Why don't we do that through City Hall instead of paying that company 
Uh, this goes for this, the other one too, the next one also. You know, 140,000 for certified mail preparation on a needed basis. Right. This, okay, well, this, is, this includes the printing and the postage and the delivery. Uh, the first resolution pertains to public notices uh, that we need to put out to notify our customers just in case there's the event of a tier two notification that would be any problems with the water that need to be notified. Uh, we've put these out in the past, and this is based off a budgetary number that we've compiled over the last three years. Uh, we hope not to use any of these funds, but uh, we've been given a very stern warning by the DEP that they will not allow us to do extensions. Um, these printings do take a while to get out because we have to write them. They have to be approved by the DEP, but the clock is ticking from the moment of the violation until that occurs. So in this particular um, resolution, uh, we hope not to have any uh, Tier 2 notifications that need to go out to all our customers. Uh, we do have over 68,000 customers. I don't believe City Hall has the printing capacity or the mailing capacity uh, to do a service such as this. We certainly don't have it at Trenton Waterworks. Okay. All right. So um, are you roll calling this, Councilman? You want this on roll call? If somebody else wants to do it, but it's okay. It's okay with me. All righty. Consent. Madam President, is this supposed to be on roll call? No. Consent. Consent okay. agenda. 22-119, resolution awarding a contract through a fair and open process in accordance with NJSA 19, 44A-20.4, etc. to Van Note Harvey Associates, Inc. for development, preparation and printing, and mailing services for con con consumer confidence report, CCR, water quality report, in an amount not to exceed three, three, $38,000. $827.71 for a period of one year from April 8, 2022 to April 7, 2023, an RFP 2022-03. In accordance with NJSA 19, 44, et to Matt Mott. And roll call. Roll call. Okay. Resolution 22-121, resolution accepting a bid and awarding a contract to VINVAR, UNVAR, Solutions, USA, Inc., for the furnish and delivery FOB of chloric acid for a period of one year from April 8, 2022 to April 7, 2023, in an amount not to exceed $123,025. Bid 2022-14. Well, um, that could be part of the consent agenda. Okay. Then we have an ordinance on first reading, 22-07 um, capital ordinance providing for the rehabilitation of Greenwood Avenue and Chestnut Avenue by and in the city of Trenton in the County of Mercer, State of New Jersey. Appropriations, $1,308,281 to pay for the cost thereof, which amount will be funded by New Jersey Transportation Trust Fund grants received or expected to be received by the city from the State of New Jersey Department of Transportation. And what would you like to schedule the public hearing for? Um, we well, we we know on the twenty first we have several already, so it has to uh, come in the first part of June, the first meeting in June. In May or June? I mean, excuse me, I apologize. <laughs> Ahead of myself in May. <laughs> okay. Now we're on public comments. No, 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 no. Now we are going into executive session for the litigation. You can read the resolution for executive session. Okay. What did I do with it? Okay. Which other? Wait a minute. Give me a few minutes. We're 
Marla, is your hand up to say something? Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson, is your hand oh, up? Oh, you to had say it. Something? I had it at the back. Wait a minute. A resolution authorizing the City Council of the City of Trenton to hold an executive session which excludes the public, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Trenton. This body will now convene an executive session um, via micro te teams that will be limited to consideration of an item or items with respect to which the public may be excluded pursuant to Section 7B of the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-12 general nature of the subject or subjects to be discussed, litigation settlement, Scanpico, Scanpico versus the City of Trenton and Montgomery versus the City of Trenton. Stated as precisely as presently possible, the following is the time when and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted at said session can be disclosed to the public. When the need for confidentiality no longer exists, public is excluded from said meeting and further notice is dispensed with all in accordance with section 8 and 4a of the open public meetings act so moved second okay. who seconded uh councilman rodriguez okay. councilwoman caldwell wilson yes Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Michelle? Yes. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn? Councilwoman Vaughn? Uh, yes. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Wilkins? Yes. Council President McBride? Yes. Carried unanimously. Oh, no, how do I with open. No, I don't want to leave because we got to come back and open session. Please mute yourselves. Councilwoman Wilkins? Present. Council President McBride? Councilwoman McBride, Council President McBride? Okay. And why can't we see her? What is this up here? That's just what's on the screen. Ms. Carter, Councilman Harrison, did you get me? I'm sorry, is Councilman Harrison here now? Yes, Councilman Harrison. Okay. Council President McBride? Council Vice President, um, do you want to wait for the President? Let's give her another minute. Okay. Can you take this? Can we take the sign down that we're back in session? Yeah. I don't. I, that's, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> You don't see her. And you can move forward with the meeting, I guess, right? Take those two. I beg your pardon? You can move forward. Okay. 
I'd like a motion for public comments, please. So moved. Second. Second. Who seconded? Robin Vaughn did. Thank you. Council Vice President Caldwell Wilson? Yes. Councilman Harrison? Yes. Councilman Michelle? Yes. Councilman Rodriguez? Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn? Yes. Councilwoman Wilkins? Yes. And Council President McBride? Still absent. Okay. You're now open for public comment. There is someone by the name of Cheryl Covington with her hand up. Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to make a comment, well, a comment about out here. I live in Chambersburg, which is Joe Harrison's uh, ward, which I'm familiar with Joe Harrison. <laughs> There's a lot of Hispanic, you know, bars out here that's just open up and, you know, I have lived right here by Morris, and there's another one where the bus stop is. Yet, where I'm at, there is a lot of speeding. The kids, there's a lot of kids on this street. We need speed bumps, and my porch is serving as the only light light in the 400 block for the whole street, or else it's dark. And that, where I live at, that's where the shootings happened around the corner at the championship bar. He didn't put the... Uh... Hello. This is not a question and answer, dear. It's a comment. Huh? Hello? Ms. Carter, what's going on here? Stand up. Okay. Do you want to close out public comment? Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Is somebody, is Sherry Garrett? Ms. Coving, excuse me. Oh, Sherry? okay. Yes, I'm here. You're asking a question. This is just public comment. We don't answer your questions. You can always send an email to the clerk's office to get an answer. Okay, so can I comment what was on the itinerary for the night with concerning the uh, police director? You can make any comment you choose. Okay, my comment is this. You suppose when you're a police officer or a director of the police, and I don't know who's in control or what or whatever in the city of Trenton. I'm just stating whenever any citizen calls the police department, the Trenton Police Dispatch Office of 989-4170 or 911, and you ask for a police officer to come out, the police are to come out. They're not to just say, oh, well, then when you call dispatch back when you need help again, they, the dispatcher states, who's your lawyer? That's my comment. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Vaughn. Does and anyone else? else? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. I'm, I'm back, Mark. I, I was locked out. Couldn't get back in. Thank you. Okay. The next speaker is Sherry Garrett. Yes. Just, thank you, Councilwoman Vaughn and the council body. Um, real quick about the agenda. Yes, um, yes. I, I just want to, hello? Yes. I just, hello? Go ahead. Ms. Go ahead. I, I just want to elaborate on what the young lady is saying. Again, I think the, um, the police director should focus on um, his job, which is managing the police department and stay out of the politics of what going on with the mayor and um, city council. That That's the issue. He's not managing that office. And I've been in there for people. Uh, I'm getting ready to write to the attorney general um, in regards to the police department about how they're handling uh, certain affairs on behalf of certain uh, constituents of the city of Trenton. Because uh, people are, like, things are just lingering for years. So just to give you a heads up on that, Getting to the agenda, uh, 22, um, uh, 98, how much of the 2020 budget has been spent to date? Because we have been spending the budget. Um, we have been spending funds in the 22 budget uh, 
prior to we having a, a issue some time ago, and it was approved, and uh, Mr. Cherry did not, um, you know, make that known. Um, I would like to know that. And I think also, uh, another question, the salaries, is that an increase because of the union's uh, uh, pay increase? Or is that uh, the, the salaries are increased because of the mayor um, wanting to increase his salary and his directors? That's a question I like, I like to be clarified. Uh, resolution 22102. Uh, authorized emergency appropriations for the park utility. Uh, they're supposed to be um, self-sufficient, and if they cannot pay their bills and they're asking for emergency appropriation from the administration, they need to be dissolved. I don't know why we keep, like, this is, This doesn't make any sense. Uh, 22104, uh, help pending. Oh, yes. Uh, help pending because of the dates. I think you guys are coming, I mean, the council's coming back to that. 22105. How many other entities responded to 22105? Uh, I, we didn't get the list of the supporting documentation to the resolution this time around. I, I'm sure that will not happen the next time around. But how many other um, uh, entities bidded on this, uh, um, on this uh, animal shelter? Um, uh, and also there was $275,000 that, uh, was approved for, um, trailers, which I did make a statement. There's a whole lot of empty commercial buildings or factories that could have housed the animal shelter. And we spent $275,000 to hook up electricity and heat and water. And from my understanding, that doesn't work in those, if you're using that to, uh, clean the uh, animals or use that for um, bathing and stuff like that. It deteriorates the the uh, those trailers because that's not what those trailers are used for. Uh, 2207, uh, I just want to get to the, uh, here, here, 22109 is the plan for homeless. Here's yeah, I, I am really concerned about this thing about when uh, Mr. Daniels said he wants to integrate uh, p homeless. Uh, I'm not every people. Humans are humans, but most people who are homeless have mental uh, some type of mental uh, uh, issue. Uh, I'm not criticized, but it's true. They do. That's why they're homeless. They just they can't. They're not able to take care of themselves make correct decisions. So you're going to merge these people into the neighborhoods and we already can't, I'm not able to deal with the crime. I'm not saying they should be in the streets, but how are we rehabilitating them before we give them housing rental? Because that's more cost. Um, shoot, 20, I'm just concerned about that. 22113, uh, 22113, 22114 program income. The American rescue, uh, uh, act and the uh, CARES Act, that's taxpayers' money. How is Trenton using that to give loans? And my thing is when it's a grant to the city, the city don't have to pay that back. But then you're, you, the city of Trenton, the administration is using that money to, 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 to loan out to uh, businesses, which has been hit hard for the pandemic, and provide services to the city of Trenton. And you're using program income. Is there interest on that income? Is that allowable? Is that legal? Like this, this doesn't make any sense. The administration does what it wants, it seems like. And no one's putting them in check. Okay, um, let's go. Because I deal with grants all the time. I, I've never heard of this stuff. This is crap. Uh, let's see. 22118. Uh 22116, one million dollars for amending. I think uh, 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 the business administrator Cruz said this was to amend funds again I, for PAC two LLC. I don't recall this ever coming about. So I don't know what I've never heard, seen this company. I don't have the supporting back uh, documentation because it wasn't submitted. 22118, 22119. We're dealing with the Department of Water. Come on now. 
Like, there's so many people in Trenton that you can hire temporarily every time there's a need for jobs. People need jobs. So you want to hire a company for this much, and it won't even cost you that much to hire four or five people just to lick envelopes, put stamps on them, and mail it out? Like, come on now. And two... They don't even inform the council if there is an issue. You, the council is, and the public is the last people really that are aware that there's a water issue until it gets put in the paper. 22120. Uh, sorry. I think I ran out of it. I think we covered it. I think I have covered it all. But again, I'm not sure that is legal to do loans for taxpayers' money that was a grant to the city to revitalize the community, and then you're going to give the, 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 the small businesses in the city a loan that they can't afford to pay back. Then you're talking about taking their property or taking whatever inventory, whatever uh, 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 equipment or, or supplies they have to pay off the loan. That doesn't make any sense. There's a problem here. I think we need to look more involved. I, I I don't know how this mayor is getting away with this. I really, really don't. I don't even know how the administration is. Some of the stuff that be coming across this uh, this uh, docket, uh, I just don't know how he's getting away with this stuff. It's just, I just, I just, I'm just flabbergasted. I just don't know how he's getting away with it. I just really don't. And no one's saying nothing. And I'm not saying this council. No one said nothing. And again, with the police director, not, nothing personal, but stay in your lane, stay in your lane, do your job, because the police department, half the time the officers are not there, the detectives are not doing their job, they're not following up, they're not investigating, they're not communicating with other entities. Come on now, what's going on? Like you, you we, how are you going to deal with certain issues? I haven't heard that. All we did was, I heard tonight was, oh, he does a great job. I'm not saying he does it and he does. He does. But what is, what is he, how is he going to handle these issues? I would like him to come to council and speak on that. Talk to us. Thank you. Next. The next person. Vanessa. Sullivan. Hello. Hi. Yes, my name is Vanessa Sullivan, and I just have a quick question. Um, I haven't been able to hear everything that's going on. I don't know how much time I need to talk, but I just want to ask one simple question. How is it that the mayor, the, the police chief, the, the fire chief, and I want to ask Ms. Vaughn about this specifically. They had a meeting going on at Galilee Baptist Church about all of this. And it was eight people in there. Eight people. And when I raised my voice and spoke my opinion, I got put out of that church. So I want to know when I want to know why that was going on and only eight people was there. And my people in my community, we are outraged to know why why y'all had this meeting and there's not more people from our community because don't nobody know about what's going on. And and I, I, the police chief, I talked to him and everything. Yeah, he talked a good game. He talked a lot of good stuff. But my brother, I never seen you in my neighborhood. I never, I, I don't know the police officers. I, 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 how we gonna build a relationship? I'm scared of the police. You, you want me to get a councilwoman told me to go down to the police station and now you the same one telling me that, that they doing all this shit wrong. So if they doing all this stuff wrong, I don't trust the police. You know what I mean? And how they how they feel about us, the same way how they look at us. And we need to work on that. We gotta work together. And I'm just tired. And if anybody wanna know why I feel this way, because this city tried to take my son away. My son was shot in this city. So I take this very personally. So yes, I wanna know what the hell the police is doing. And hey, you're right, they need to do their job and do it a little bit better. And we all need to step up to the plate and stop pointing the fingers and get this shit done because our babies is dying and they suffering. And the people have had enough. And my young brothers and sisters under 18, they want to meet the councilwoman. They would love to see a beautiful black queen. And, my, and for my white brothers on the city council, don't be afraid to come into a neighborhood that you say you represent. 
You say you represent this ward and that ward. Come out here and be around your people. Y'all all, y'all all voted yes for me in my program for my home ownership. How I'm going to live here now, Miss Vaughn and Miss Kathy McBride and everybody else, and we're going to be scared to go outside? Huh? We're going to be scared to go outside because people getting killed left and right? We turn the TV on and they're killing us, the police. Huh? Black on black crime, we're killing each other. And then we got these damn silent killers with the lead pipes y'all was talking about the other week. So what is going on? We got to come together. Put all that petty shit behind y'all. We are the city of Trent. We are the capital. We're supposed to be representing here. We can do better than this. Everybody should have their camera on right now. I want to see y'all damn faces. That should be a part of y'all job. Miss Vaughn ain't the only one there. Y'all getting paid. Let me see your damn face. Because half of y'all probably laughing behind the cameras. Let's be realistic. That's all I have to say. I don't know if I stayed on topic, but I, I just want to let you know how we feel out here. This shit is real out here. It's a war zone. I live in Dolly Homes. You understand what I'm saying? And the officers need help, too. They're carrying around deadly weapons. You know what I mean? This ain't an easy job. Hell yeah, they need a mental evaluation. You're damn right they do. And the police chief do, too. Everybody. That's all I had to say. Have a good night. Next person. It's the next person is the Trenton business. Go right ahead. Trenton business. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm here. Um, I hope you can hear me. Is that right? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Just checking. Thanks. Um, my name is Ms. Chowdhury. Uh, I have apartments on Greenwood Avenue. Um, um, I had a, a handful of different comments. First of all, I wanted to uh, second many of uh, Ms. Garrett's comments um, and thank her for bringing much needed logic to the situation on multiple items. Um, and also Ms. Sullivan's comments. And I think Ms. Sullivan's comments in particular spoke to the issue with the police director. Um, I also think that, you know, he, he seems to be a very nice person. Um, however, I think Ms. Sullivan's point was to how urgent the situation is in Trenton and how it's not being um, addressed as an, policing in Trenton is not being addressed as an urgent issue. And the reality is it's a very urgent issue. You know, we're what, on our fourth um, person that died in police custody or through police interaction in the last three years? Um, and that's the ones that we know of, the public knows of. Um, and that, that need, there's an urgent need. And although he's taking measures, there needs to be real actual measures. I contacted the police station um, the other afternoon and I asked them what reforms have been put in place. They're, first of all, they instituted state reforms about de-escalation training, um, but Trenton can do more than that. Um, that was only imposed by the state. So that was not a Trenton initiated uh, uh, reform. Um, the other thing is there's supposed to be some kind of different training. Um, I'm curious to see how much it filters down onto on-street policing. Um, I agree. I never see the police. I never see them get out of their cars. They, they never want to get out of their cars for a thing. Even on a police call, they don't want to get out of their cars. <laughs> they, they seem to be very distant from the community. Um, you know, and, and you already know my take on it. I, I, I also think that they are uh, way too aggressive um, and that they have a lot of um, very troubling attitudes, um, which are constantly seen in everything from their posts to their language, to their body language, to their line of questioning when they deal with Trenton residents. Um, so we need much more reform. And we also need a real metric to measure the reform. Like, how do we know what reform is happening and how do we know um, how the success or the failure of that is being measured? When you go over to the Trenton police site, it's very uh, limited, very, very limited compared to other police sites for a major city um, and even for a suburb. It's very limited. It's literally names, a couple numbers, and it, that's that's about it, you know, and a call for recruits. But um, there's no substantive information there and there's no substantial help for people of Trenton. Um, and that, of course, it's these idea, it's it's these problems with lack of reform, which led to the recent incident with Henderson. I mean. I could have predicted that that was going to happen in, you know, no long period of time. You know, the obstruction of justice didn't come from Mr. Henderson. The obstruction of justice came from the police that came to him and created a false flag situation. They instigated him 
They they beat on the glass 18 times as he expressed that he wanted to call the police. If a man is expressing or anyone is expressing that they want to call the police, you think the logical person would understand that he's not a significant threat? Um, although, you know, it's not outside of possibility, but there's a lot of things that are inside possibility. He's asking for more backup. How did this happen? How did this happen? How, why did they approach the car? They haven't answered that. On an anecdotal note, a friend of mine who happens to be Caucasian sat in his car um, for hours and fell asleep in his car at a park. Never questioned, never approached by police, never asked if he was drinking, never asked if he was on drugs. But Mr. Henderson was approached. So that's where the first obstruction happened. And, and, and the, the burden of this lies on the police. The burden of that entire incident lies on the police because they created a situation. They literally fabricated and created a situation. Um, and then and then became so aggressive and belligerent that um, they created a reaction, which is often how police do it. They create a situation and then they criminalize the reaction. You know, they push somebody and wait for the person to push back like they did in Fort Lauderdale. And when they push when they push a man three or four times and then he pushes in the back and says, what are you doing? Then they say he assaulted me. They, they charge Henderson with assault, too. A man never got out of his car, but he was charged with assault. So this is how the police turn situations around. Um, so I, I agree. We need more reform. Uh, I, I want to stick with um, what what Mr. Wilson, what uh, Officer Wilson can do. Um, so we just need like more 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 significant reform. The other thing I wanted to address was um, the housing issue. Um, I was looking at these demolition jobs. I. I really question what's happening with these demolition companies. I'm looking at, you know, eye-popping figures, you know, 500,000, you know, a quarter of a million. Um, but I'll go, to the, I'll go to the smallest number as an example. Um, demolition of a 1,200-square-foot building should be approximately $20,000. And you're talking about a building that's already gutted. The building has, you know, probably minimal structure on the inside. Um, I looked up uh, I looked up um, demolition costs in various places. Um, home demolition costs four to eighteen thousand on average. Average eighteen thousand. High uh, twenty five thousand. Low four thousand. Cost to demolish homes tearing down a fifteen thousand uh, I'm sorry fifteen hundred square foot home should cost uh, you know as little as six thousand. Um, you know twenty five thousand. I'm not even seeing figures up in the thirties. So I, I want to know, and this includes, by the way, the cleaning. So, you know, uh, home arise. The cost of this, this uh, a $1,200 square foot home should cost you between $4,800 and $18,000. So my question is, um, what kind of real oversight is happening with these demolition jobs? Um, I really question that any, that any oversight is happening. Um, and I, this is a direct question I would love to see, I would really like to see addressed. Um, who is... Who is putting these contracts under the kind of scrutiny that, the, that these contracts need to face? Um, is it someone from the real estate department? Who is watching these contracts? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't feel comfortable with these numbers at all. Um, they, they, seem, they just seem larger. They, they really seem larger than they should be, especially with the condition of these houses. Uh, this house on, uh, what is it, Calhoun? They said walls are already missing. So how is a demo up at 40,000? You already have walls that are coming down. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, the other important issue about the housing and the demolitions are the issue of hiring local. Um, I second the idea, and I've been mentioning it for a long time. We need to hire local. Um, as I mentioned before, there are simple ways to get around these requirements. Um, it, it, it's very simple for a contracting company to state that they looked for, some, for people and were not able to find people. There is no, again, there's no oversight for that. So it seems to me the trend's in an interesting situation. You have all these demo you know projects going on and you've got a lot of people that look for that are looking for jobs and and how those two are, are so unable to connect doesn't seem normal I, just on the my first impression of it it seems that there's some kind of mismatch there something something is going on that shouldn't be going on you have a lot of people that are looking for jobs. we have a lack of jobs we have a lack of job opportunities and we have hundreds of jobs that are out there now i understand it's hard to get a construction company i understand it's hard to get contractors i've, I've come across this problem however even if it's the small jobs the cleaning jobs the 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 the, the smaller you know um jobs that require less licensing 
there's got to be better methods of hiring people inside and there needs to be someone watching these contracts the fear that i have is that no one is watching these contracts and and no one's watching the hen house and i'm and i'm concerned that that the fox is watching the hen house because these it's, it's just too much um and um yeah, I, I, I'm afraid Trenton is just continuing to get scalped um, and gouged. Um, obviously, it's working for somebody, but it's not working for Trenton. Um, you know, the budget always seems to have issues and, and numbers which are just large um, and exaggerated and don't seem to make sense. And Trenton taxpayers keep paying and very little is happening. Um, and my last comment is that um, I'm interested that they're doing a project on Greenwood and Chestnut area. Um, I'm interested to see what happens with that. And, um, and I'm excited to see some some rehab happen on some of those buildings because we have buildings that are coming down on uh, on Chambers, on Greenwood. We've had them for, you know, for as long as I've, I've seen. Um, and that's it. Um, and thank you to everyone for their comments um, and for continuing this discussion. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Councilwoman Vaughn, could you see who's next? Uh, no hands. Oh, somebody just threw, threw up a hand. Let me see who it is. Uh, it was more. That was uh, Chad. Chad J. Chad yes, can J. anybody hear me? Um, I just like to know when the freak is the traffic light going to be fixed on Clinton and Beatty that's been out for the past nine months. I called up. Oh, the parts in is going to be fixed. But well, where the hell is the part coming from, Mississippi? It hasn't still been fixed. I hope somebody could get that done. Thank you. Next person. That's it, Council President. All righty. Um, I'm gonna move to close public comment. So move. Second. Miss mm -hmm. Um Miss Penny Carter. Uh, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Yes. Councilman Harrison. Yes. Council President McBride. Yes. Public public comments are now closed. Can I have a motion to open civic comments? So, yes, so um, 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 Councilwoman, um, yes. I didn't hear who moved it and seconded. It was Robin Vaughn, Miss Miss Penny Carter. And who seconded it? Council President. Okay. Councilwoman uh, Caldwell Wilson. I'm sorry. We're we're we're, we're oh, open wait. civic comments. Or civic comments. No. Councilman Harrison. Um, I would like to have a civic comment tonight. Um, first, I would like okay. to uh, talk. Again? <laughs> Mr. Ms. Uh, Mr. Um, Councilman, we're just uh, Miss Penny is doing something different here. She's taking a vote for civic comment. Oh, okay. Yes. So just say yes or no. Mm -hmm. Mr. Michelle. So your vote is Councilman yes. Michelle. Yes. Councilman Rodriguez. Yes. Councilwoman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Wilkins. Yes. Council President McBride. Yes. Um, we'll start with Council, Councilwoman Vaughn. To start. Yes. Um, I would just like to uh, show the video of um, Jawan Henderson doing my public comments that was released by the, it's a redacted version. Let's make a test of doing more than and I'm going to go ahead, that. Councilwoman. I'm going to share my screen just for folks who didn't see it. And this is the reason why I believe that Steve Wilson should be held accountable, along with the mayor, along with the uh, Internal Affairs Department. Um, folks should be held accountable. We have no accountability in the city for uh, police misconduct. Police misconduct cannot go unchecked. 
And the fact that we had a clergyman come to this council and, uh, and, and just pretty much glossed over it. We had other members of political parties, district leaders, committee leaders who are, who are elected officials uh, who want to give the mayor of the city of Trenton and his police department, his police director, a pass. Mr. Uh, Wilson is unqualified for that job. He absolutely is. If anybody goes across this country, across this state, will see his qualifications don't even cut the mustard, not even close. He has never held an executive position in the past. He doesn't even know how to do a budget. He's never manned resources. He's never allocated resources. He's never produced a plan for the city of Trenton. The mayor talked about he has community, community policing, uh, uh, community policing capabilities. He has not put any commu community policing expertise on the street. He was supposed to replace a radio room so that officers are safe when they're out in the field. And they, and, they, and they have adequate radio connectivity. We're still on the same old radio platform. That's not approved by the uh, United States Homeland Security. There's a whole list of issues um, uh, about uh, the reason we should Council get President, rid of if, 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 I, if I may politely interject. Um, no, no, you cannot, I not on my public comment. But the, the, this relates to a couple cannot, items that need to be raised cannot, here. Number one, you cannot um, interrupt. Mr. Bridges, you know you can't interrupt that, in the civic comment. I, so what, what we're talking about here, is late. you uh, cannot I'll, I'll uh, text you, interrupt my public comment. You need to text me. Go ahead, Councilwoman Vaughn. Your ten minutes. So I'm going to uh, play this video of uh, if folks can see it. This is when the officers approach. You're getting out of the car. I'm just going to let you guys watch. There's no video. We don't see anything. You don't? Somebody took it down. Mr. Mr. Uh, Rivera? Rodriguez? Mr. Rivera? I didn't take anything down. You've been displaying a whiteboard for the past five minutes. Okay. I'm Thank you. Know. Just turn your computer around to the screen instead of you being on this screen. Turn. No, no, it's supposed to go straight to the video, but it's not working. But I would just ask that everybody, um, I'm just going to stop sharing because it's not working properly. What's supposed to be happening now? The video, my, my, my screen is frozen. I, I wanted to see the video, but I cannot. It's going to log out. Stop sharing.
Can I see what happened now? She stopped staring at the screen. And it won't let me share. Just open the door, open man. The door. I'm not going to step out of again. the car, man. Open the door and step out of the car. I don't care who you are right now. I'm telling you to step out of the car. Can you hear? Yes. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. I'm not having a debate, bro. Step out of the car, man. You're going to make this more difficult than it got to be. I'm going to break the window. Then open the window. Open the door. Open the fucking door. Open the door. Stop, stop reaching, bro. Open the door. I'm not going to tell you again. Open the door. Then open the door. We are the cops. Okay. Open the door. You understand you're under arrest, right? You understand you're under arrest, right? Obstruction. Open the door. You're under arrest. Don't move the car. Nope, he's trying to start the car. He's trying to start the car. Okay. That is what happened. And I'm just very disappointed that elected officials, appointed officials, some members of this community came here to the council meeting and want to give the Trenton Police Department and the police director a pass. And these officers are not held accountable. They are still on the job. They are still on the street policing the city of Trenton. And nobody is holding them accountable. No, no consequences whatsoever. Ask the mayor, when did he put those four animals on leave? They need to be off the street, not policing us. When are we going to hear from the mayor and the police director as to the status of the employment of those officers? Now, I want to hear Reverend Harris, Ms. Jones, Tracy, Tracy Sidebatch, all of them. Where, hold your mayor accountable. Get those animals off the street. They should not be working, collecting taxpayer dollars when they're going around terrorizing and maiming and killing citizens of Trenton. Shame on all of you who come here and advocated for Director Wilson. Director Wilson needs to do the honorable thing and resign and not step a foot in Trenton again. With that tape, I will continue to advocate for his removal. I will continue to advocate for Mayor Gussie Ward to do the right thing. I will continue to advocate for Angela Honorfree, the Mercer County prosecutor, to file charges on these four officers. He filed charges on Jawan Henderson, and he had to subsequently drop them because he knew to take and substantiate his lie. That's what a prosecutor did. Hold him accountable. He needs to go. And only the citizens can make that happen. The, the internal affairs manager needs to go. These guys, these police officers need to be disciplined. They are the animals. You heard the tape, you saw the tape, and you have people come here, disingenuous, lying, and then shame on my council members, shame on you. Because when there was a woman here, police director uh, 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 um, Carol Wilson, 
everybody came and they made sure the same folks, some of the same folks came here and said that she was not qualified. They even locked her out of the police station. Then Sheila Coley, they ran her out of town. She turned everything around, diversified that police department, put in a new rate, tried to uh, put in a new state-of-the-art radio system, and they went back and turned it back around and put those corrupt officers over here running the station. That's that's who's running your police station right now. Corrupt officers who need to be disciplined, who should not even be on the job. So they want Steve Wilson over there because Steve Wilson doesn't know anything. He can't challenge the system. Get them out of that police department. We can still we can still have an opportunity to do it. Just because we failed tonight doesn't mean we can't bring them back up here next week. I'm telling you, citizens of Trenton, get rid of that police director. And this council need to be ashamed of themselves. They, and, and one last thing. Folks want to say that this council got rid of directors. The only people who fired more directors is Reed Gussior. He got rid of Ben Delay. He got rid of Shakira Abdul-Ali. He got rid of Sheila Coley. That wasn't the council. The only directors the council called to task was the law director Morelli, and now today, the director Wilson. So do not come here and make up stuff. You can't make it up because the record speaks for itself. It is not the council who fired folks, the mayor. This mayor is still under investigation for his procurement. I just want to answer one question for one of the constituents. There is no body governing the hen house. There's nobody uh, reviewing these contracts. There's nobody in the uh, procurement office. She's, not, she's a gatekeeper for the corrupt mayor. These contracts are illegal. He's under investigation for his procurement practices or lack thereof. And this council needs to hold them accountable. They're too busy acting at rubber stamps for their party that they are members of. But I hope the authorities are listening. Because there's a lot of corruption, a lot of folks who are getting paid. And we don't have a contracts compliance office in the city of Trenton. We haven't had none in 10 years, over 10 years. So there's no one holding the mayor accountable, the procurement office accountable, the business administrator accountable. People just come here and get contracts. Some of them don't even have legal LLCs. So I'm just telling you guys what the deal is. So I'm going to close my comments. But I'm going to come back. And I'm not going to stop until the leadership of law enforcement of the city of Trenton, the old leadership, the current guard, be held accountable and they get the hell out of Dodge and stop taking my taxpayer dollars. You're not going to take my taxpayer dollars and terrorize people that look like me. That's my father. That could be my father. That could be my brother. That could be my son. That could be my uncle. You're not going to push up on them and shoot them and think you're going to still walk the streets for free. Are we Your coming, time for, is you? Up, we coming for you? Not tonight. We're going to be another council meeting. But we coming for you, Steve Wilson. You better just go ahead and resign. So go, go ahead. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Councilwoman Wilkins. Yes, Council President. Um, I heard so many things said tonight. There were so many comments, so many statements. Uh, there was a lot of passion and what people spoke about. But I want to see this same passion. And I pray for this city, and I pray with you all. But I pray more that the same vigor, the same outcry, the same stand-up people, the same people who spoke for, that they do the same with all of these killings and injustices in this city. The injustices in this city are not just crime and murders. The injustices in this city also include to take from this city. 
we have the rescue, the, the rescue care plan that bought in $73 million. Have we seen the result of those millions of dollars that have come through this city? As I drive around this city and I do every day, I say no. You don't see it in the streets. You don't see it in the parks. You don't see it in the infrastructure. You don't see it nowhere in this city. This city does not look like $73 million hit the ground running because it didn't. I want to make this statement. We all need each other to bring this city back. And I'm going to say it again. We all need each other to bring this city back. I heard someone say we will have summer, the summer from hell. I heard someone say this is not personal, it's business. I heard someone say I don't feel safe in my city. My kids don't feel safe in my city. I heard someone say where were you when Jawan Henderson was shot? I'm going to keep saying his name. Jawan Henderson, say his name. I'm going to keep saying his name. There was an injustice done to that young man and all of the people that showed up tonight. I just wish you would show up on his behalf with the same vigor, the same excitement, the same passion. How many other incidents were recorded and not submitted? How many other incidents? were lied about and covered up how many we have 40 killings murders in our city in 2020 40 murders in our city in 2021 when will it stop i'm not pointing the finger to say this one is the cause that one is the cause that person is the cause but something has to change Something has to change. And as I look through the list, and I'm trying not to get emotional, of the 40 murders in 2020 and the 40 murders in 2021, all I can do is say their names. We have to continue to look over those lists. Google it. Google it. It's on Google. Say their names. We cannot let these young people and these, pe and these older people, we cannot let them be <clears throat> forgotten. If it was one that it was someone that belonged to us, one of us on this call, how would we feel? Say their names. Say their names. Don't ever, ever, ever forget their names. I want to thank the citizens for doing their civic duty, coming out, speaking out, those that spoke for and those that spoke against. I want to thank everybody for taking their time. Please remain involved. We need each other in this city to turn this city around. And all I can say to y'all, because I'm getting emotional, is I pray, I pray, and I pray for my city. Thank you. Councilman Rodriguez. Well, oh, yes, I have to. Uh, congratulations to Vanessa Sullivan for the activity she had last Saturday. I would have wished to see at least one more council member there. I guess our council don't care about crime in the city. Uh, also, there's another subject. Uh, we had a spe special meeting supposedly to deal with the executive order approving <coughs> 18 resolutions by the mayor. And uh, at that, I tried to work on a resolution so that we could officially fire the clerk. I say officially because he walked out of his job. He fired himself. The next day he came up with a sick uh, sleep that was too late. There's no record of him calling the emergency, uh, Mr. The emergency an ambulance that time. Yes, there was no record of that. Is this and permittable? Still, there was 
I'm having a difficult time. No, 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 it's, no, it's not. No, it's, no, it's not. This is not. This is not permittable. No, no, no. no. Can I speak? No, this is not permitted. No, you what? cannot. Sex you cannot of you on voting a against fire and him. Sex of you. I was the only you one that voted speak yes. on a person that mattered. He fire himself. Miss Penny Lord, Carter. You oh, you you that's the same thing him. you did that in that meeting. Yes, ma'am. And go ahead. Go ahead and cut me off if you, you want to. Because, because he knows, he the knows is the truth. What? The six of is. you decided to keep him in, in, in sick leave or whatever it is. He walked out Miss of Penny his Carter. He yes, ma'am. about the clerk. The conversation should stop. Oh, we mean. You didn't want to mute them all. No. I just needed to point right. Yeah, but you are all in the same right group. Ahead. All the rest of them. All of you in cohorts with the, with oh, the okay. clerk. Could he still talk? <laughs> Mr. Um, Mr. Harrison, you may um, have your... Uh, no, I, I apologize. It's Mr. Uh, Muschel, Councilman Muschel. Yes, thank you. First of all, no one should be using anyone's name. And uh, the police director's name should not be used in this. And you should know the facts before you open your mouth. If I'm not shooting, our prosecutor's office is not handling it. We're not handling it. All right. So for... Council people just to run their mouth and they don't know the facts is not right. You can't mention people's names in it. And this is why everyone gets in trouble. You should also find out why the individual in the vehicle did not open the door. Just shooting your mouth off and screaming into the radio is not the way to do it. Know your facts, do your investigation, and then come out and present them. But it seems to be this council just goes haywire. Please, please. That's a cover up. Please mute, please mute yourselves. Once again, know the facts and wait for the facts to come out. But everybody jumps the gun and just turns around. We're going to have a radio system second to none. And it's in the process of being done. So I don't know when our council people talk about it, that it's not being done and all that. I think they like to hear themselves talk. And... All this does is create a lot of problems for everyone in the city of Trenton, and you're never going to move the city forward with facts that are not true. And that's all I have to say for tonight. Thank you. Good night. Um, Councilman Harrison. Council President. Councilman Yes, go right ahead, Councilman yeah. Harrison. Uh, first, first, I would like to start off, and uh, I would like to uh, apologize to uh, Mr. McDaniels, uh, Ms. Daniels, and uh, Ms. Lopez tonight. Um, I don't think we should be berating any director. Um, we ask for respect, and we should be giving the same thing back. I think it's, it's disingenuous when we continually do that and berate people. But seeing how we want to go off on a tirade tonight, um, I'm going to, I'm going to read, uh, some text messages regarding the director that everybody's been talking about. It's regarding one of my colleagues who makes comments, get this director off this group immediately. This group is for duly elected. It says, then she says, uh, since when are the directors allowed to post to this text group? I did not give any acting director, Steve Wilson, my cell number. He better not ever text me. The, uh, the actions of an idiot. 
She says, George Michel, the man behind is taking down a seal coley, and all of you aligned with that racist and sexist. Did you just call me a name, uh, Council President McBride? I didn't call you. I didn't. I, no, I did not please, say anybody's please, name. Allow not say me. anybody's yeah, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did not say. I did not say anybody's right name. I did not say anybody. I said George Michelle's name. That's what I said. I did not say your name. Don't. You don't. No. Me, you call my. Te- you're Council, reading my text now. No, I didn't. Hey, hey, you want to? You want to admit to your text? Okay. You admit it to your text. Okay, right. Councilwoman so you Paul. should admit that it's too, right? Please, Ray, no, where you? No other police sec director got uh, Ms. access to that text. Ms. That text Ms. box Ms. is for Carter. elected officials. He's uh, not an elected official. You can mute yeah, her right on because that she's box. out of line. Okay. Yeah. Out of line, Councilwoman. I want to finish. I want to finish the best part. Right here, you go. Block all these racist white you elected have- officials. Right. That's what you said. So tonight you attacked Ms. Lopez, you attacked Mr. Daniels, you attacked Steve Wilson, but but here you are, here you are again writing messages about racism. You can't even complete a sentence. You can't even write See, look, look, at least I know my ward, and at least I help people in this this city. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody nobody knows who you are. Councilwoman Vaughn. You would not look, get at the end of the day, look, you, you wrote those racist do. comments. Your They're ward. yours. No one knows you you, you no wrote one knows those racist you comments. White people in your ward. You- uh, right, right. I'm in Wilbur section. I'm all over the city. I'm in your ward. I'm on Stuyvesant Avenue helping the pantry in your ward that you don't do. So you could talk that talk, but you ain't never walked that walk. Just remember that. You're, you're, you're kidding yourself. You're racist towards people. You're angry because Sheila Coley's not here. And now you're, you're going on a tirade about how you're going to go get director uh, Steve Wilson. So you ask yourself, you went after, uh, after director Lopez, Mr. Daniels, director Wilson. So who is the problem here? Is it them or is it you? She made me start looking in the mirror. I never brought up your name. You're just mad because people are holding you accountable. There's something not right when all you ever do is attack every human being. They're your text messages, not mine. I didn't make racist comments. You do. Continuously. Over and over, you attack people of this city who actually want to make this city better, but you make up accusations. You got no evidence. Where is your evidence? You don't ever have it. So at the end of the day, just remember, like you want to talk this game, like you're, you're important. You, all you want to do is belittle people. You attack directors. You attack anybody who doesn't agree with you. But at the end of the day, just remember, those are your text messages. You wrote, you wrote racist comments. So people who support you need to realize, who are you supporting? Because I support the people of this city. I don't support racist people. Because you seem to have racist comments that fly off your tongue. So there you go. I hope you uh, remember that those text messages are could be uh, Oprah request, <laughs> right, Mr. Kaloji? Could those Oprah request? Could those text messages be Oprah request? Any text message that pertains exactly. To the so Oprah. we need to stop on this crazy tirade. We're here to do the business of the city, but you want to belittle everybody. You want to attack people. Send us crazy messages all the time. It's just embarrassing. We're here to do the city's business. Nobody cares whether we like each other, but at the end of the day, we should be worrying about getting the job done instead of making this making the city look like like a, like a hot mess. But then again, like I just said, this is who you wrote. So, hey, at the end of the day, I just want to let everybody know, Thursday night, 530, I'll be in the city council chambers. The chambers will be open. I'll be in there. So if any people want to come to the chambers, I'll see you in there in the chambers, 530 on Thursday uh, evening. All right. Have a blessed it's, evening, everybody. The chambers will not be open to the public, and you don't have the authority to open them. Uh, the chambers are open. Uh, council president, the, the council okay. president, the chambers are open. Right the the, uh, you, governor, I, the I, governor I gave the executive I, order. It's over. I, I the chambers are open. Um, Mr. Uh, chambers Mrs. open. Caldwell, Mrs. Caldwell Wilson. Yes. No, I I have nothing to say. I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight. And for the dialogue, and the, um, we're not always going to agree, but we do have to work for the city and move forward, because all this fighting back and forth is not getting us anywhere. Have a good evening, everybody. So I would just like to um, thank everyone for coming out, with um, putting, uh, giving us 
uh, their opinion in reference to uh, the docket and the police uh, rising. I want to basically touch on the violence in the city of Trenton. I heard so many comments this evening about whose place it is, whose fault it is, whose fault it's not. Let me just be clear. The city of Trenton is not a Fortune 500 corporation, but it is a corporation. And in a corporation, mm -hmm. if a person does not perform, there's only one alternative. You either perform or you're asked to leave the corporation. Under this last incident where these so-called jump out boys jumped out on this young man and shot him in his neck, the video shows where he was drugged out of the car after he was shot in the neck. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that he had constitutional rights. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And for all of you that want to give the police director a pass, him nor the mayor came forward to discuss this. They never told the Trentonians that there was a police shooting. We were informed by the media. No one ever informed the Trenton residents nor the council that the police had a shooting. If they swept that under the rug, what else have they swept under the rug? Because by law, not only should they have had a public um, uh, conference, a press, a full press court to explain to the public, but the attorney general's office should have released the video on March the 4th, 20 days after the event occurred. We didn't even get that. We never even got the release of the video until we viewed the press conference with the parents, with the NAACP representative, with Larry Hamm and their attorney. That is when they released the press conference. Now, let us fast forward up until this particular day. Everyone is saying that the police director is not responsible for the crime in the city. Well, why do you think that the biggest portion of our budget goes to the police department? Because we pay them top dollar to make the necessary changes that they need to make to protect the citizens of the city. Should they know about every gun in the city? They don't have to know about every gun in the city, but the borders of this city should be protected. The borders of the city of Trenton should be protected because the police department should have a partnership with ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. They should have a partnership with these people because those are the people that help you with the gun trafficking. The guns are coming up from the southern borders. They come through the city. They're dropping off their guns to our children. And yet and still, none of our borders are protected. And then you come here and say, oh, the police director is not uh, at fault. 
Why do we pay them top dollar if they do not have a remedy to reduce the crime in our city? They get top dollar because we need results. We need a reduction in crime in this city. And I'll say to each and every one of you that don't think it's important enough to question him to find out why they never disclosed the fact that that young man was shot in the borders of this city. They never talked about how they choked that young boy up in front of uh, St. Francis Hospital. They never talk about how they shot the man 17 times on a domestic call. They never talked about how they sprayed mace in a man's face and he died because he had respiratory and uh, trouble. Come on. And I'm saying to you, go out to the front, to your front door and look in the streets right now and see the 80 young children lying there in the street, in the cold, dead, laid to their graves. And then you take a page out of a time to kill and imagine that they were all white children laying out there in the street. This city would have been shut down a long time ago. Don't even try to justify 80 young people dead in the city of Trenton in two years. And you have a nerve to come to me, Pastor Harris, Pastor Ethan, Ethel Jones, Algernon Ward, and Tracy Syfax. You come to me and you tell me it's no one's fault that these guns are being bought into this city and no one has shut these borders down. You come to me saying it's all the children's fault because they got their hands on a gun. Who's peddling the guns? Why don't you have a partnership with the ATF? What are you doing, director? Don't tell me it's not your fault. 80 young people lay to their graves in two years. Where else could this happen at but eight square miles of actual green land? Give me a break. You don't want to hold anybody accountable for your children's de dead bodies? You don't want to hold anybody accountable for your children's dead bodies? Are you people serious? Are you serious? The only way that this city is going to come together and turn the page is when the people that live here, that pay the taxes, recognize that the people that we put in office must work for us. They're not here to be self-served. They're here to work for the residents in the city of Trenton. And I'm telling you again, go to your front doors and look at the 80 young people laying out there dead. And picture them as if they were white. The only way that we're going to bring about change if we stop sugarcoating this and call everyone into account, not just director, but the mayor and everyone else have to be called to account for the lives of our young people. And I'm the last one that you need to come up here and tell me who's at fault and who's not. Because my son's blood run down these streets. And I'm telling all of you, you need to hold these people accountable. You have to hold them accountable. They come up here talking about what this council is doing and what they're not doing. Because we want answers and we want them now. And not just from the mayor, not just from the director, but from the prosecutor's office and from the attorney general's office. You had an obligation to release that video on March the 4th. 
you didn't release it until the parents came forward and told us that you had paralyzed their son. Shame on you, Trenton. Shame on you, residents of Trenton. Shame on you. With that, Miss Penny Carter, I think I've made my point. Can I have a motion to close civic comments? So moved. Second. Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. Councilman Harrison. Yes. Councilman Michelle. Yes. Councilman Rodriguez. Councilwoman Vaughn. Councilwoman Wilkins. Yes. Council President McBride. Yes. Karen. Good night. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yes, we, we gave you a motion. We did. We gave motion. you a motion and we all said it. aye. Councilwoman Wilkins seconded. Okay. And all in favor? And aye. You aye. Four ayes. Aye. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, Sarah, what are we doing here? So the meeting over. You want me yeah, the meeting's over. Okay, so you go yep. here. Okay, very good.